today, I'm going to be talking to another brilliant guy who just got into University of Toronto in Canada. And he didn't just get into university. He won a full ride scholarship to this university, which is so mind blowing. Um, I participated in different Olympiads, uh, if I remember, like from the first grade to the fourth grade, I never missed a single Olympiad in math, mm -hmm. in mathematics. So mm -hmm. I, but I lost like every time for three years, mm -hmm. I didn't get any place in Olympiads. I don't know. So you're basically telling me your dad punished you for trying to excel, trying to be, trying to get better grades. I want to study abroad. I oh. didn't know where. Mm -hmm. Okay. There was um, two options. First one is London. I, I don't know. I heard the word London, then they wanted to go there because like I had, I used to have pen mm -hmm. and there was a big pen mm -hmm. uh, and, and I searched it on the internet and mm -hmm. it was in London. So mm -hmm. I wanted to go there. How you went from complete zero scratch to getting into University of Toronto in Canada. That's the part I love about my dad. Mm -hmm. This is like pretty, pretty impressive for me because like mm -hmm. giving for your child's education, like one third of your salary, that's really amazing thing. Mm -hmm. I will thank my dad for that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, amazing not, dad. Yeah, yeah, he will not understand that, but uh -huh. I'm really grateful, grateful for my father uh -huh. like, giving me this opportunity because like this is how my life changed like 180 degree after uh -huh. that. Exactly. Yeah. How can you possibly be studying when you're playing video games eight hours a day, right? Yeah. What are you doing? When do you sleep? What do you eat? Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. For the people who's watching this and mm -hmm. you might say like, okay, this guy has SAT test center and he faked his SAT. No guys, um, we got approved for the SAT test mm -hmm. center, SAT test center in May. Mm -hmm. So we have that access to organize SATs from May, but I, I took my last test, test thing in March. Your university is the same university where Jordan Peterson teaches. He used, he used to, to teach, teach there, yeah, right? He used to teach university. until like 2021. Yeah. Yeah. The other day on social media, I, I saw his post about his university, online university. He started oh. an online university. I don't know that. Yeah. And He's coming to Tashkent, I guess. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Jordan Peterson yeah, is coming. To that Central Asian University, you know, the, the old Aqua University. Uh huh. He's coming to that university. Oh my God. That's I, I watch advertisements somewhere. Yeah. Is there any way I can have him on the podcast? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that would be I, awesome. I yeah. That would be boom. Please, please guys, get me Jordan Peterson's contact. Okay, I'll hit him up. Let's get him on the podcast. I, I would love to everyone to remember this, this quote. Mm -hmm. Why you should be normal when you can be the best. Yeah, no one could have said it better than Zlatan Ibrahim Yeah. Right? Hey folks, hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Adustri Muse. I'm your host, Muhammad Ali here. Today, I'm going to be talking to another brilliant guy who just got into University of Toronto in Canada. And he didn't just get into university, he won a full ride scholarship to this university, which is so mind blowing. And I'm super excited to be talking to this guy today. And I can't wait to ask him some questions I got here and find out more about him. So if you guys are interested, please keep watching. All right. Well, without further ado, meet Mr. Diorbek Namazov. So hello, everyone. My name is Diorbek and I'm from Nawaii. I lived most of my life in Nawaii. Uh -huh. But back in the day, I was born in Samarkand region, uh, which part, which is close to the Nawaii. Uh -huh. So basically, we moved to Nawaii when I was four or five because like um, the weather was very bad in my region. So uh -huh. we had to... We needed a uh -huh. uh, better life mm -hmm. in winter. So that's why we moved to uh, Nawaii back then mm -hmm. and my dad's work changed. So then we mm -hmm. settled down in Nawaii and my parents still mm -hmm. lives in Nawaii and mm -hmm. I've been living in Tashkent for three years by myself. I'm really surprised you went straight to the your hometown part. Like I wasn't really expecting you would talk about your hometown. So before we talk about that, uh, what do you say we talk a little about your, you know, education right so okay, I, when i looked at your cv i saw that you went to different schools like first you were going to school number 16, 16. in navai right and then you moved school different school in navai and then you moved to an international school in tashkent which is something new here like i don't see many international schools in uzbekistan 
Right? I know a lot of international universities like Wyatt and S Singapore Management University, and there are a bunch of new ones. So do you want to talk about your you know, personal school experience as well? Um, well, September 2013, I guess, uh -huh. I, um, I went to the school number 16. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just the regular school because none of the other schools accepted me back then. Mm -hmm. Because like we came from the uh, region, so we didn't mm -hmm. have that something they called prepiska in mm -hmm. Hawaii. So that's why most of the schools didn't accept me. Mm -hmm. The only school uh, accepted me was the school number 16. Mm -hmm. So I started studying there. Um, mm -hmm. There were like two different type of classes, like one the one class with the students with high intelligence so mm -hmm. they studied like better things mm -hmm. uh, they studied math more mm -hmm. but i was in normal school just mm -hmm. an average um yeah because like i couldn't read and uh, read the words in uzbek mm -hmm. because like i went to the russian um mm -hmm. the kindergarten or mm -hmm. something like this so that's why i had some problems with reading in uzbek mm -hmm. and so i couldn't re recognize the uh, alphabet when I saw it in mm -hmm. Uzbek, so mm -hmm. that's why they didn't accept me to that to mm -hmm. the class with that genius guy. So that's mm -hmm. why I studied in the normal class mm -hmm. for like four years. Mm -hmm. So I participated in. And how was that experience taking class with guys who didn't speak much Russian? So you were shipped to a group to a class with Uzbek guys, right? Um, I wasn't that much fluent in Russian, so mm -hmm. right now even I don't speak Russian that, that much. So. Mm -hmm. I just went to the Russian uh, kindergarten for like one year. So when mm -hmm. I f when we first came to the Navoyi, and and I I wasn't good at none of them, mm -hmm. neither of them. So mm -hmm. that's why um, I was in the middle of nothing. Mm -hmm. So that's why like okay, I will start mm -hmm. um, this one again. So I will start uh, learning um, alphabet from beginning. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened in the school number sixteen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I participated in different Olympiads, uh, if I remember, like from the first grade to the fourth grade, I never missed a single Olympiad in math, mm -hmm. in mathematics. So, mm -hmm. I but I lost like every time for three years. Mm -hmm. I didn't get a, any place in Olympiads. Wow. But when it comes to the first grade, I I usually participated in like different Olympiads. Mm -hmm. Whatever was available, I just got into the room mm -hmm. and took the test mm -hmm. or write the essay or did mm -hmm. something like this. But in fourth grade, I took I took part in like three Olympiads. It was math, it was Uzbek language, it was uh, geography or something like this, and I got the first place um, in three of them. So that's how I kind of stand out from the other students for the first time. This is how I stand out in my school. Mm -hmm. This is how people uh, knew about me. Mm -hmm. So this is how it started. So you were like a genius math guy, right? I wasn't that much genius, mm -hmm. but because I I knew how to learn the things. Mm -hmm. That's it, that's the whole point. Because like I wouldn't good even in the first grade, mm -hmm. in the fourth grade. So mm -hmm. that's why like I always tried to learn. So um, in the beginning of like third grade, I started going to extra classes mm -hmm. in school. Um, then I we studied different handbooks from fifth grade, from sixth grade. Um, when I went, when I moved to the fourth grade, I knew the things in the sixth grade handbook. There was something like ekub, ekuk, um, mm -hmm. kasser, and such things. I knew like most of the things when I was in fourth grade. That's why I think so. I got for quick clarification, you're talking about math concepts here, yeah, right? Like fractions, yeah. fractions, yeah, and yeah, common yeah. formulas. I, I'm telling the news back, yeah, yeah. Because some of our viewers here are foreigners and they don't quite oh. understand, yeah, those Uzbek expressions. But anyway, yeah, yeah they, they can look them up, right? Yeah, yeah. there's <laughs> just concepts in Uzbek, like uh -huh. in the sixth grade hand, handbook. Yeah. yeah. So you've you've had a knack for math from a young age, right? Um. Is, yeah. So how how did that? You have you always been like that, or you where where did that interest talent come from? Um, I don't know, like. If I remember my childhood, like mm -hmm. I was good at anything if I do it constantly. Mm -hmm. um, I used to go some classes, mm -hmm. not, not not extra classes. I just I could just uh, study well in in a regular class. Mm -hmm. So I got the good grades. I was always try to be the best in class. Mm -hmm. um, so you had that competitive spirit. Yeah. Right. You always wanted to be the top. Yeah, I always wanted the to be the first one. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, where where did that competitive spirit come come from? Like. 
is that your family environment is pushed from your dad, mom, or is that the, just a school environment? Um, when did you realize you had that competitive spirit? I always uh, afraid of losing. Mm -hmm. So every time I got like lower grade, for example, even four was a, like a really bad grade for me. Mm -hmm. Because like I was always afraid of going home after the class if I get four or oh uh, my let, let alone the three and twos. Uh -huh. If I get like four uh -huh. after five, like I would be so sad and uh -huh. like and I would be late for home like uh -huh. one to two hours after the class. Uh -huh. So I would always cry after the class like, without going mm -hmm. to home. Yeah, mm -hmm. and. and and is that because you were afraid of your parents' reaction? Um, no, like it was, I don't know how that, that was born within me, but mm. I always had that thing inside of me, like you should be the first. Mm -hmm. uh, you should change the, uh, you should do things that uh, your parents couldn't mm -hmm. able to do that. So mm -hmm. that's what pushed me always. Um, as I said, like uh, even though we lived in the far re region, uh, but like very poor region so my father was able to move us to the city mm -hmm. Nawaii city and it was like very big change in our life so I said to myself you should work hard you should do some some genius stuff you mm -hmm. should be the you, you should try to be the genius mm -hmm. I know you cannot be the one but if you work hard you can you can be the close to the genius mm -hmm. so that's always pushed me you have to be the top mm -hmm. and you have to change the things in your community community mm -hmm. so that's something always pushed me so my parents mm -hmm. didn't say anything. Um, if I get like lower grades, mm -hmm. my always my dad always used to um, make jokes about this. So mm -hmm. like he, even if I like I should go to the uh, I used to go home like sad and he would like did you get something low? Mm -hmm. And then I said yeah I got like four and he would be j just laugh at me. Mm -hmm. So he didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. He was not that much straight uh, strict on my grades. He said, like, as long as you learn, that's cool. Mm -hmm. I don't push you push you to get the good grades. Mm -hmm. Because, like, if in second grade or the third grade, I remember when I I used to fight with teachers for the grade. Because, like, if they wanted to give me the four, I would say, just give me one more question. I mm -hmm. will answer it correct, and mm -hmm. you will give me five. Mm -hmm. So and then one of my teachers told it to my father. Mm -hmm. Then he said, he, he at that time, he was very strict on me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. He he, I think he hit me with belt. Oh my for god! For that, yeah, and told me that uh, you uh, you should apologize to your teacher right away. Just go out, go out of home. Uh -huh. Just go to find the teacher uh -huh. and just sorry. Uh, just say that you are sorry. Oh my god! For that, after that, I never fought for the good grades. Uh -huh. That was the only point. My mm -hmm. when my dad did hit me yeah wow i i'm speechless here i honestly don't know what to say because i don't know so you're basically telling me your dad punished you for trying to excel trying to be trying to get better grades yeah and standing up for yourself yeah the lesson my dad wanted to me to learn mm -hmm. is just don't study for the grades mm -hmm. okay just they they can they don't have any impact in your mm -hmm. life even if you get five or four mm -hmm. because like I I had the comp competition in my school like mm -hmm. there were guys who were almost good at me at, at some 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 subjects but mm -hmm. I was the best I tried to be the best in all of the subjects mm -hmm. um, that's mm -hmm. what I tried so I always used to get more than like mm -hmm. um, like thirty or forty five like sc scores like mm -hmm. you know like. You, there is always like four to five subjects in mm -hmm. in one day, mm -hmm. and you have like six days. Mm -hmm. And I used to get like two two to three grades from one subject mm -hmm. in one day. So, mm -hmm. like, I just studied for the grades back then. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I I don't think I learned anything mm -hmm. from that classes. Mm -hmm. After that lesson, my dad gave to me. I I changed it. I changed my perspectives mm -hmm. on like studying. Then I focus more on learning rather than getting the good grade. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is how my mm -hmm. uh, perspective on the academia involved mm -hmm. back then. Mm -hmm. I see. So, so your dad was simply pissed at you for just being too obsessed with grades. Yeah. This is trying to teach you that there's more to getting grades to learning, right? It's about yeah. just acquiring new skills, knowledge, 
it's about the school experience. It's not yeah. just about grades, right? Yeah. Right. That, that's what he wanted mm-hmm. to, me to learn, yes. So that was your experience in your first school, right? It's yeah. A, and how things were different when you moved to your next school? Um, no, like I studied in my first school for eight years. Uh-huh. Then I started learning English. Mm-hmm. Then I couldn't um, manage... Uh, I couldn't have good skills at time management, so I couldn't handle the both studying extra lessons in in English learning center and studying in school. I couldn't handle that. And I had extra seeing, which was like use affairs thing. Mm-hmm. If you know, like there are organization in every school, there is like Yoshlarat mm-hmm. Fokka, mm-hmm. Youth Union of Uzbekistan. Mm-hmm. Um, they, are in, they are in every school in Uzbekistan, public school. So I was the part of that and mm-hmm. I was back then I was the president in the in the city council mm-hmm. wow. so like we had like 20 to 30 schools in mm-hmm. city in Nawai city it's not big city mm-hmm. um then I, I had the teams in every school in Nawai mm-hmm. back then so I was like in eighth grade mm-hmm. so I was the president but then I couldn't handle anything back then because because mm-hmm. um, you were involved in so many different so many events, extracurriculars, yeah, extracurriculars events yeah, something right. like this. And why did you sign up for it in the first place? Is that um, because you wanted to lead, be part of uh, something much bigger? So as I said, like mm-hmm. that was a part when I when I got got into that Olympia thing. Mm-hmm. Then after that, like I I was in, involved in Olympias after like uh, sixth or seventh grade. Mm-hmm. Then I just and I I I wasn't really having fun back then. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm studying. I'm getting some good. Um, place in some Olympias, in regional Olympiad or in mm-hmm. city Olympiad, then I had, okay, that, that's boring. So mm-hmm. what do you want to do next? Mm-hmm. So, and there was a class like really boring for me, the mm-hmm. biology. Mm-hmm. I really hated my biology teacher. <laughs> Why is that? Um, was he or she uh, that bad? Um, she wasn't that bad, but she didn't uh, like me at all. Like it was uh-huh. something like personally. So uh-huh. <laughs> um, yeah. And like, I always tried to be funny in front uh-huh. of her just uh-huh. to get like, to not to be like mad at each uh-huh. other, but uh-huh. she didn't let me to be friends with her, to be honest. Uh-huh. Like I always um, tried to be the good student in front of her. Like I n- never missed her classes, but she always used to give me like three marks. Then mm-hmm. I was like, oh, come on. I- I- I'm just, en- that's enough. Mm-hmm. I will not try to be the good t- student mm-hmm. anymore. Then, mm-hmm. then in seventh grade, there was a biology class in 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 uh, on Monday, I think. Mm-hmm. Then I, then there was a uh, election was going on mm-hmm. in school for this youth union of Uzbekistan. Then I said, okay, I will just skip the class and go to this election. Mm-hmm. So we, me and like four or five of my friends went to that election. There were like whole school, like all active members mm-hmm. of the schools. I w- and I was never part of that kind of activities. Mm-hmm. Like I knew that guys was involved with and I was kind of fan of them. Mm-hmm. So they had their reputation in school. Mm-hmm. They they used to go onto the stage and mm-hmm. used to make spe- uh, speeches on different things mm-hmm. back in the day. So th- then I was a big fan. Mm-hmm. Then, then they said like, do you want your nomination for any any position? They said, so what kind of positions do you have? I said, they, they gave me like eight or nine positions. Mm-hmm. And as I said, like I always wanted to be the best. Even though I didn't have any experience on leadership ship or anything, I just uh, uh, I just ran it for I just ran for the pre, uh, like president of the school, mm-hmm. the head of head of the school. And did union, you did yeah. you win? Um, yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, Despite I, having no experience in leadership no experience, or giving speeches, no. wow. No. So how did he, how do you think you pulled that off? Um, I even didn't want to win. I just uh-huh. I just wanted to skip that biology class. <laughs> That's how I got involved. <laughs> And and like I there was like two things, yeah. you know, like there is a Kamalak and uh-huh. there is Yoshlar at Fokha. Okay. Like for one for the younger g- generation, one for the older. Mm-hmm. So from first grade to the seventh grade, it's mm-hmm. Kamalak. Mm-hmm. From eighth grade to eleventh grade, it's Yoshlar at Fokha. Mm-hmm. Um I was I ran I ran for the Kam- Kamalak, mm-hmm. but I in the end I ended up with being the president of the Yoshlarat Fokha, the mm-hmm. bigger generation. Mm-hmm. Even though I was not in the eighth grade, mm-hmm. I was I was the technically the boss of that mm-hmm. from eighth to eleventh grade mm-hmm. uh, people in school. And why do you think you you know those big guys wanted to give you a shot? Why do you think you deserved that more than other candidates competing for that title? 
um, whole in the whole competition, I ran for that the smaller for the younger generation. Mm-hmm. But they said like, oh, you know, we have we have a girl for this position, so mm-hmm. I think we cannot take you to this, to this position mm-hmm. in the final stage. Mm-hmm. There were like two three stages mm-hmm. for this position, and it was like two three days, mm-hmm. and I'm like. I was winning the, each stage. In the final stage, there was me and one girl. And I knew that I was be- better than her in mm. that day. And they told me this. So in oh, what sense you were better than that girl? Is that because you were I, I had better, better ideas for the school. Uh-huh. I wanted, I, I didn't had. I didn't have the ideas before this election, but mm-hmm. in two, three days, I, come, I came up with some ideas mm-hmm. and I represented it. I, I made presentations. Mm-hmm. And from this third person's perspective, like I was really better than her. Mm-hmm. And they told me this, okay, you are good at this, but we don't know you. They mm-hmm. said like, this girl is in, in parts of like our organization for like two years. And she, she it's like her last chance to be the president for that Kamalak organization. Mm-hmm. Because like in the next year, he moves, mm-hmm. he needs to move, she needs to move to the Yoshara Tvoke and, and she will be like eighth grade the lover of all four, so she can't be the president in Yoshlar Tvoke. Mm-hmm. And and they told me, like, it's her last chance. Let, let her to be the president for mm-hmm. that organization. And I was really mad. I just, okay, just go out, go mm-hmm. away. Like, mm-hmm. I don't want to talk with you guys. Mm-hmm. It was it was corrupted. This is how mm-hmm. I describe it. Mm-hmm. It was corrupted. The system was really corrupted. Then mm-hmm. I just went to the classes. Like two, three days later, they, mm-hmm. they invited me to their room. They said like, okay, you, you, I really saw the passion in mm-hmm. you. Um, if you want to be, I can make you the present of that use you know, of the, mm-hmm. in, uh, for the Yoshlar Fokker. Mm-hmm. Then I'm like, no, like, because like I was in eighth grade. Mm-hmm. There were some member of that use you know, of Uzbekistan in school, like they were like 10th grader, 9th grader, like all of them were my brothers. Like I knew them, I, I didn't know them like in person, but I knew them somehow and they were really good at, but uh, they were like better than me mm-hmm. in terms of everything, leadership, ideas, team buildings, everything, they were better than me. And I talked with the whole team, they said, okay, like we want you with, with, uh, with our team. They said like, be our boss. Mm-hmm. They told me something like this. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, I said like, no, I can't do this. Mm-hmm. They told me, okay, we will teach you, and and mm-hmm. we believe you that you can mm-hmm. do that thing. Yeah. So this is like how I how I first become the president in in just school. Mm-hmm. Just the city uh, city council was the, the uh, year after that. So I was in this Yoshlar uh, Tvoka for the one year inside the school. Then I just left the comp uh, like studying stuff. I didn't study it well in school mm-hmm. in those years because like I was already good at, at any subject so I didn't have to learn anything new because like I could I was uh, easily able to solve some ma- mathematical problems mm-hmm. of uh, ninth or 10th graders back in the day so even, you, even though I was like in seventh grade I was able to do that so, so you were ahead of your peers at the time right yeah something like this yeah yeah even though I didn't like this process but I didn't study, I didn't attend any classes. So I think Mm -hmm. no one will watch this from the government side. So (laughs) I didn't study like seventh, eighth and 10th grade. Mm -hmm. I just wasted my life in school back in the day. I just used to go to school, just Mm -hmm. met with my friend. Mm -hmm. Just after the first class, I would be just out and go to that use uh, use union. Mm -hmm. This is how. So like looking back, you think it, it was, it's all worth that trouble being part of the youth union, leading the youth union. Yes. So what did you get out of that experience, out of that project? I was doing projects. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were uh, bringing a lot of good for the community back mm-hmm. then. Uh, we did a lot of charities, marathons mm-hmm. for the community community mm-hmm. in Navoyi. Mm-hmm. And 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 we made a uh, fundraising that raised money for like 53 children with the inborn hurt uh, problems mm-hmm. so they have some problems with hurt so we had so you mean uh, like their heart they yeah, have heart, heart problems yeah heart problems so. Uh-huh. so we had some agreements with some the big organization like there is like very uh, there are some some like two or three organization in Hawaii which made a lot of money which makes a lot of money and it's most uh, mostly government based companies so they were uh, agreed us to fund the uh, medical operation money 
So we raised like uh, it was like it costed like uh, three to four hundred U.S. dollars for each children, and mm-hmm. we 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 were able to fund the operation medical operations of the fifty three children mm-hmm. back then. So that adds up to how much money in total? So you said three hundred dollars per kid, right? Three hundred dollars, just three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars per kid. That's, that's fifty kids. That's fifteen thousand dollars. Fifteen thousand or something. They gave like you this. a grant of fifteen thousand dollars. They didn't give us. They just talked mm-hmm. with the medical centers, and mm-hmm. we didn't. Uh, we didn't have money on our hand, but uh-huh. we helped them. We helped that families to get that contract with that company and uh-huh. the medical thing. Uh-huh. So we this is how we impacted the people in the Nawai. Mm-hmm. Then I was doing well. Then I had just one purpose. I wanted to be the the, the president of the Republican Council. Mm-hmm. So there are different stages, you know. There is regional, city, school, but the the best one is the, in in the country, whole country, Republican president. Mm-hmm. So it's like it would. It's like the best one mm-hmm. in the field. Mm-hmm. So if I if I went to that place, I would be the best. Mm-hmm. So then I, I could move on to the next thing. Mm-hmm. I think if I continued on that path, mm-hmm. but that didn't happen. There was a guy from our school who who was the president in the Republican Council, and after he, you could only be that in that position for one year. Mm-hmm. So then you should move on. You should mm-hmm. just live your life after that. Mm-hmm. So then he he got into some universities, some pedagogical university. Then after and he was doing some photography stuff. I don't want to say anything bad about this, but it was not it wasn't the position that I wanted back in the day. I didn't want it to be just a regular photographer after like being that top level, because I knew that he was meeting with president of Uzbekistan. He was meeting some. He was in the part of some international conferences. So I didn't want it to be a uh, part of that kind of uh, meetings and being the photographer mm-hmm. just after that. Yeah, that's a big downgrade, actually, if yeah. you think about it. Yeah. You go from shaking hands with top government officials and the president himself to being just a photographer. Yeah. Yeah. I was really scared. Then, and yeah, and, and we did some sort of event and we won on it and the... Governor gave us a trip to the Samarkand, and we talked with the governor mm-hmm. all all evening. Then we had some plans to do with. Uh, there is like Yetai Chesing. There is a leader. Mm-hmm. Yes, you will have the like ninety mem- members mm-hmm. if you are the president of that council. Mm-hmm. But there is a leader mm-hmm. who works for money. You are the volunteer. They mm-hmm. don't. They didn't pay me anything. I worked for free for them. But there is a guy who is a leader who leads that whole team and who makes contract with the big organization because like we are not 18, we can't do anything. So mm-hmm. there is an official guy. So he leaded the team. So he, we were having some conversation with him. Then he told me like, what do you want to do in your life? And I said, I don't know. I just wanted to be that that position mm-hmm. that the guy's name was Jawahar mm-hmm. in that Jawahar's position. Then said, do you know what he's doing right now? Mm-hmm. I said, yeah, I know he's studying. Where is he studying? That university. What is he doing? He's doing some part-time photography. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, can I drink? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Please, please. Help yourself some water. No problem. Yeah. So, and what was your reaction when you heard that he was, he went from being the president of Republican Council to just being a photographer? You couldn't believe you were here yeah, because he th- thought then, he would um, go on to become some government official. After I knew that what he was, what he was doing, and I knew the the downgrade thing. But, <clears throat> mm-hmm. but just I didn't re- uh, realize it. Like what happened? Mm-hmm. I I knew like that's a downgrade, but how how come the guy could be like mm-hmm. could experience such things after that? Then I'm like, no. In in that day, like I mm-hmm. I realize that I realize it. Like I need something else. So. I have to change, and I said, mm-hmm. like, no, this now you said pedagog- pedagogic. Mm-hmm. How how do you guys say it? Yeah, pe- pedagogical Pedag- institute or university institute or something like this. Yeah, I don't want to study there. I want to study abroad. Uh-huh. I didn't know where. Mm-hmm. Okay, there was some um, two options. First one is London. 
I, I don't know. I heard the word London, then they wanted to go there because like I had I used to have pen mm -hmm. and there was a big pen mm -hmm. uh, and, and I searched it on the internet and mm -hmm. it was in London. So mm -hmm. I wanted to go there. Mm -hmm. That's uh, how like studying abroad mm -hmm. born in inside me. Uh -huh. So that's then after that like yeah I said like I will start uh, studying uh, learning English. Then I learned the English. Then I like just fully focused on English like. I said I used to study like 10 to 12 hours just English. And just a quick question, you were doing all that prep in Navai or in Navai, after, after no. you moved to Tashkent? No, no, in Navai. Okay, still when you when you're in Navai. Yeah. It was in 2021 in March I think. Okay. I started the English I, I started learning English seriously. Mm -hmm. Then because like I had a goal that I want to take the IELTS in December, in mm -hmm. seven months from learning uh, with no English mm -hmm. background from starting the, I, I wasn't that beginner, I was mm -hmm. elementary or something like this. I thought like I will get seven in December. Mm -hmm. Then I like, this is how like I, I started learning English. Mm -hmm. So would you like to talk a little about your test prep experience as well? Sure. Because because IELTS and SAT are some of the requirements for foreign universities right so did you at the time realize that you needed so clearly you realized at the time you needed the IELTS for studying abroad right yeah of course and, and so what was that experience like because I'm sure there are a lot of viewers right now watching this podcast and they are right now in the in the exact position you were in when you had just started out and they want to know how you went from complete zero scratch to getting into University of Toronto in Canada. So they, they want to like that clear outline that they want to see the clear. So they're wondering if you can give them kind of a blueprint of how to go from not knowing English to getting into one of the top universities in the world. So back in the day, there was some influencers on on TikTok, on, uh -huh. and there, there there was no Instagram reels, so there was uh -huh. only TikTok. I think uh -huh. there was some influencers on YouTube and TikTok, like Umijan Ishmohamedov and uh -huh. some other people who were uh, promoting the studying, studying just the education. They uh -huh. were promoting the education, and, and I used to watch them, and I. I tried to learn from them and they said like you should study abroad you should study at top university but mm -hmm. i didn't know what was the top university mm -hmm. then i watched the interview with a guy who studies in london in mm -hmm. england mm -hmm. that was my dream mm -hmm. i watched his interview and he said like oh i couldn't get into the u.s universities so that's the universities rejected me mm -hmm. that's why i'm going to the london mm -hmm. and i said oh stop stop your back so mm -hmm. that's the point you wanted to be the best and this guy got rejected from u.s mm -hmm. and then only his he was all his the left off only option he left with was UK. Mm -hmm. So do you want this? I said no, no. I will prepare for the US. Mm -hmm. So this is how preparing for the university, and this is how the my goal uh, like was born back then. Mm -hmm. Then like I started learning English as I said in March. After, it was after the pandemic, and I I didn't have many options in Hawaii. There were not many good learning centers back in the day. So I started learning the English in March. I studied grammar for like 40 days or 50 days, something mm -hmm. like this, not even two months. Mm -hmm. Then I, then they, they told me like, there is a thing, something like IELTS. Okay, you mm -hmm. have to take it and then you can apply to universities. Okay, I will, I will take the IELTS. Then I started studying IELTS. I, I used to do listening. I, def, I, I remember the first uh, I, real, uh, real IELTS mock test. Mm -hmm. I did it and I got like six, not six. It, mm. it was just six correct answers <laughs> out of forty. <laughs> I thought you got nah. six on the scale of nine. I mean, come on, yeah. You, you are the, a good English teacher. Uh -huh. You know that student cannot take like yeah. from scratch to uh -huh. like forty days uh -huh. from IELTS six in yeah. listening. I mean, I mean, still six correct answers is not bad. Is, is it? What is it like two or three on the scale of I, nine? I don't remember that. Yeah. but I, I got like six correct answers uh -huh. like, because like. After the section one, I couldn't remember what I listened. Uh -huh. There were there were things going on like for, okay. for thirty to forty minutes. And just, I'm guessing you, I am, and I think you just guessed all those an six answers. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I found like two to three answers. Then, uh -huh. then I guess in part three, mm -hmm. multiple questions. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, so this is uh, what I got in in the first time mm -hmm. mock test. Mm -hmm. 
and there was my teacher, English teacher, his name was Nur. Mm-hmm. So we called him the Mr. Nur mm-hmm. and he had some strategy. Strategy. He didn't teach the students general English. Mm-hmm. He just taught us the IELTS. Mm-hmm. We didn't prepare, we didn't learn English, but we just prepared for the IELTS. So you mean like exam techniques? Only, only exam techniques. Exam yeah. techniques, like how to approach yes and no not given questions, how yeah. to approach headings, right? We used to, to scan the passage for answers. Yes, yeah, something like But not exactly read and understand. Yes. Right. Um, we studied listening for, we supposed to study listening for two months. Mm-hmm. Then we study reading for two months. Mm-hmm. Then we study uh, speaking and writing two months. Mm-hmm. Within six months, we we had to take the IELTS. Mm-hmm. That was our like map. That was mm-hmm. our map. So I started. I said like, okay, I can easily pass that listening in two months. If you if you will be able to find more than twenty five correct answers, then you can go to the reading. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was his, I think, the strategy. Mm-hmm. From six to twenty-five, mm-hmm. I had I, I I needed to do that much progress within mm-hmm. two months. Mm-hmm. So I studied. I tried to do some things. I used to write a lot of transcripts. Mm-hmm. I think that was the thing helped me a lot in the listening. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I was able to do pass that listening exam because mm-hmm. like I used to do like four to five real uh, like tests. A listening test, just listening. Mm-hmm. I uh, the strategy was I used to do just the listening first. I could find like four correct answer in one section. Out of ten, I could find like four correct answer. Four out of forty. No, four out of ten, just in yeah. section one, for uh-huh. example. So it's like fifty, about fifty percent success 50%, rate. Fifty percent, yeah. Then I used to write uh, transcript, mm-hmm. like for one hour, mm-hmm. just for one section because I, I didn't know. Too many words back then. Right. Vocabulary. My vocabulary was very bad back then. Right. And looking back, do you think that strategy helped you? Um, this is how I learned in the English. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like this is how I I got like that that I don't want to talk with all the past because mm-hmm. that would be too boring because mm-hmm. I didn't have really good experience with learning the English because it took mm-hmm. me too much time and I was not that much consistent on learning English. So mm-hmm. in summer, yeah, I had some fun with mm-hmm. my friends. <laughs> I didn't learn English at all, so I didn't study that much. But like in 2022, in February, I took the IELTS test. Mm-hmm. I, I saw like I would get something like 6.5, but I ended up with six. Mm-hmm. So yeah, but I, I somehow achieved my goal within, with one year, within one year. Not even one year, seven months. No, from March to February. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, February. Yeah, it's like 11 months or something yeah. like this. And, yeah. And plus summer break. You said on summer you were yeah. away on vacation. Yeah, we, we had fun. some. Yeah, I still studied in summer, but the, uh-huh. because like in usually I used to study like 10 to 12 hours, but in summer, like mostly five hours. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't that, that much studying for mm-hmm. me in mm-hmm. summer. I see. So this but, is how I got six. I took the test in Tashkent. There were not sent, uh, exam center in Nawaii. Mm-hmm. I took the test. Then I tried. Uh, I, then I then I tried. I come back to Nawaii. Mm-hmm. I, actually, after the test, I came back to back to the Nawaii. Mm-hmm. I was waiting for my score. Mm-hmm. I was. I told my friend that I got. I will get seven, but I I, I was expecting six point five. But but I ended up with six. Mm-hmm. I was in the class when I, when I, my re, when I got my result, I got it on my phone. Like mm-hmm. they used, we used to get SMS at 9 a.m. in the morning mm-hmm. back then. I got like six, and I cried somehow in class. I said like I want to go home. I told this to my teacher. Are you kidding me? A big yeah. boy cried just to see his results. Come um, on, like, you can do better than this, buddy. You're not um, a little girl, right? I used to, <laughs> I used to cry without crying out uh, outside, out loud. outside, like out loud, yeah, out, out loud, yeah. yeah. I would just sit and depressed, like uh, I would be depressed. Yeah, I would just sit and don't talk to anyone, and uh, like my inside would be crying. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why I, I said like I cry a lot. And Even though I don't cry in the outside, but I cry, my, my inside cries a lot. Uh huh. I said, did you, are you, so you're telling me you got into University of Toronto with IELTS 6? No, there was a whole different story after that. Uh, okay. Because like, I wanted to get 7, uh-huh. then I, that 
if I get seven, mm-hmm. I would be done with IELTS stuff. Mm-hmm. But I ended up with six. Mm-hmm. And, and I saw like, that, that's, I'm shy. I was shy of like, getting six. In I was like 15. Not even 15, I was 14. Mm-hmm. I would be I 15. Mean, for a 14 year old, six is not actually a bad score. Yeah. And I, given the fact that you studied only for one year, yeah, barely a year, that's quite an impressive achievement going from. Yeah, that's zero my teacher's, to that's what six. my teacher told me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I was like, no. Mm-hmm. I, I said, like, yeah. I can't keep my head up in Nawaii with like aisle six. <laughs> that was the mindset of like 15 years, of, years yeah. old kids. Uh-huh. I said, no, I can't keep my head up in Nawaii, so that's why I have to move somewhere. Uh-huh. I told my, within the, within that day, mm-hmm. it was Friday, I remember, I just went to my home because I was like really sad, like, but my teacher was congratulating with me that six because, mm-hmm. because I was already in that very, in the school near to my home, it mm-hmm. wasn't in the city, so I moved, I changed my school then. My teachers was, were telling me that, oh, you did a good job because no one got IELTS in my school. Even like there were not many good teachers back then in that school. I don't know how the, how the students doing in school right now, how, what kind of teachers they have right now. But uh-huh. in my time, there were not many good teachers. Um, yeah. Then I, I went to my home. I tried to look for schools in Tashkent. Mm-hmm. Some, I knew there was only one school it's, uh, I said like I was a big fan of Umi John mm-hmm. and he got he had a school uh, CIC mm-hmm. is it okay if I tell the name for sure yeah of course you gotta give those uh, people credit okay because they were part of your journey like if it weren't for those people right now you wouldn't be sitting here right yeah like, so yeah. the credit should be given where it's due guys yeah if, well, every, everyone who was involved was part of your success deserves some credit yeah please yeah. feel free Totally. <laughs> okay, then yeah. I wanted to go to that CIC school. Uh-huh. I called them and they said, like, we don't accept like ninth grader. Uh-huh. They said, come in, come after the September, you will be like 10th grader. So mm-hmm. then you can come to our school. Mm-hmm. They said, I said, no, I can't wait till September. Mm-hmm. Like, I should go to Tashkent right now. Mm-hmm. Then I, and I found like school called Target. Mm-hmm. I, I saw so like, said Target, right? Target. Target. Yeah, I Ta- saw the learning center. Uh-huh. At first, like, I I saw their advertisements mm-hmm. back in the day on TV or on some internet, but I saw like they are some sort of learning center. Mm-hmm. It turned out they just opened their school. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, why not to try it? And uh-huh. I said, I talked I talked with them. I said like, oh, I have IL six. Do you guys will accept me? I mm-hmm. said like, because like I saw like IL six was nothing mm-hmm. good back in the day. Mm-hmm. But it turned out in reality that it was great achievement for 15 years old kid, mm-hmm. even though in Tashkent. Mm-hmm. So I said, like, I have only IELTS 6. Do you guys will accept me? I said, like, international, I said, like, international school does not usually mean international school at all. It's just private school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, people just I, opened the school for yeah. making some money. Yeah. They just name it international. Yeah. Put the word international next international. to it. International. Next, yeah. yeah, everyone thinks that it it's was a same with school. CIC, yeah. like most of the Cambridge International College, uh-huh. and it turned out they are not international at all. Mm-hmm. I uh, target international school; they were not international at all back then. Mm-hmm. But we are international school right now. Oh, congrats! Uh, right yeah. now, uh, yeah, we will talk about it later. But for sure, yeah, I'd love to hear more about. It. I actually have a bunch of questions. I want to know about your school, like the curriculum there. And the, you know the learning process, the staff, and everything. Because your CV says you're you're a president of their student, U- body, yeah. student body there, like youth union, right? Yeah, something so like this. I'm, I'm curious. I'm honest. Yeah. I honestly am. Okay, so let's talk about tell, later. Tell us more yeah. about Target International School. We will talk about. But, uh-huh. but when it comes to like my uh, the time when I moved to Tashkent, it was very interesting because mm-hmm. it, it was just the day my result came out. Mm-hmm. And I talked with Target International, so they said like it's three million sums for one month, and and like there was too much money. It it is. It still is a lot of money. You said two thousand twenty-two. It was too much. Twenty-two. Money. That's that's about two hundred and fifty dollars a month. Yeah, God, that's it's nuts, like, guys. <laughs> yeah. Imagine paying two hundred and fifty dollars a month for your education. Yeah. I used to make around made like around ten million sums, uh-huh. and he said he really thought about it really yeah. hard because like it was like one third of his salary yeah it is it is a lot of money that's what I'm. an thinking. extra i had 
I need some money to living in Tashkent. Uh -huh. I was 15. I didn't make any money. Mm -hmm. So um, I talked with my dad and he, he always loves to invest for the education. Mm -hmm. That's the uh, that's the part I love about my dad. Mm -hmm. This is like pretty, pretty impressive for me because like mm -hmm. giving for your child's education, like one third of your salary, that's really amazing thing. Mm -hmm. I will thank my dad for that. Mm -hmm. Uh, amazing not, dad. Yeah, yeah, he will not understand that, but uh -huh. I'm really grateful grateful for my father uh -huh. like, giving me this opportunity because like this is how my life changed like 180 degree after uh -huh. that. Yeah. Um like he said like okay, we will go on Monday. Mm -hmm. We are still on Friday night. Mm -hmm. He said like we will go on Monday. Mm -hmm. I'm really happy, happy about it. it. It was my best friend's birthday. Mm -hmm. Right now we are friends. We are friends with him like for twelve years mm -hmm. with Shrop. Mm -hmm. It was his birthday on eleventh of March. Are you talking about Shrop Mardonov, the guy who was on the podcast? No, no, no. This he's uh, older than me. Like, uh -huh. I I'm from Navoy, not uh, Samarkand. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, um, yeah. I had. It was my best friend's birthday. I, 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 we have that tradition with my friend. Mm -hmm. We go to sleep over to each other's home. Mm -hmm. when our birthday came mm -hmm. so i was at i was i went to his home i was planning to sleep over we eat with my friend like 10 to 15 friends because mm -hmm. all of us live in like house not in apartment mm -hmm. a bit far from the city center so mm -hmm. um yeah then we, we we were planning to watch some movies and we, and we had some playstations mm -hmm. and some stuff we were we supposed to have really good time mm -hmm. then my dad called me they said Hey, I have work tomorrow in Tashkent. Mm -hmm. You should come right now. We will go to the Tashkent tonight. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, that I, I'm having parties with my friends. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, like, do you want to study in Tashkent or not? Which one is important to you? He said, like, mm -hmm. okay, the education is more important than me. Mm -hmm. I came to my home. I mm -hmm. packed my things. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, I forgot my charger in my learning center. Mm -hmm. Because, like, I couldn't uh, leave the Nawaii without seeing uh, thank, uh, thanks without uh, thanking to my English teacher. Mm -hmm. I went to his home like at 9 a.m. or some, 9 p.m. or mm -hmm. something like this in the evening. He mm -hmm. was still teaching at, at 9 p.m. I said, look, thank you. I'm, go I'm, uh, I'm going to Tashkent to study in, the th in this school. Mm -hmm. He said, okay, good luck. And this is how, and we just went to the Tashkent just th that night. Like next morning on Saturday morning, I was in Tashkent. Mm -hmm. We just went to that school. My dad uh, handled the paperwork. Mm -hmm. He paid the money. He paid like extra one million two hundred sums for the dormitory. Mm -hmm. Then I, he then he left. Mm -hmm. Just nine a.m. He, he I was alone in Tashkent. Mm -hmm. Imagine, wow. yeah. Like, just day before at day before that at mm -hmm. nine a.m. I got six from miles. Mm -hmm. And day after that, I'm in Tashkent yeah. without my father and mom. I mean, life happens fast. Life happens fast. And it's full of twists and turns that you're not prepared for. Yeah. yeah. I was, I really wanted it, but I didn't like the feeling at the beginning. Uh -huh. I, I was kind of scared. Like, I'm like, bro, you're 15. Are you scared of living alone uh -huh. Uh -huh. in Tashkent? This is just part of Uzbekistan. You're not even in abroad. Yeah. How do you want to study in abroad if you can't live in Tashkent mm -hmm. alone? Yeah. Right. Independently. Yeah, I lived in dormitory, mm -hmm. and and how old were you at the time? I was fifteen. Fifteen, was, you're still fifteen. Okay, I was fifteen. Yeah, yeah, pretty mature. Like to have realized all those things on your own, like figured those things on your own, because this sort of self support, like self pep talk. Pep talk is like when you say it's gonna be okay. You got this. Don't worry. Uh, uh, if you can't handle that. How are you going to handle studying abroad? Because not all young people or people 15, 16 have that sort of maturity. Yeah. And you showed that maturity from, from a very young age. So that's, that's good. That's yeah. Really Self-talk self -talk is uh, mm -hmm. like way more important than most people mm -hmm. think because I always talk with myself even before coming mm -hmm. to Bukhara. Like, yeah, okay. You go to abroad. Mm -hmm. You will not see the Uzbekistan for at least four years. You will not travel inside Uzbekistan, mm -hmm. you will not have that opportunity. That's why, why not to come Bukhara mm -hmm. for the last time, mm -hmm. for like next four years, let's say. Oh yeah. That's I, why. Like, I appreciate you coming all the way from Navai to be honest. No, podcast. I came yes. from Tashkent actually. Oh, from Tashkent. That's I live in even Tashkent. further. That's yeah. even further. That's it. That's, I can't honestly thank this guy enough. Okay. You're doing me a big favor. You're doing our audience a big favor. Guys, least you can do 
to repay the favor is like this content. Sh- share it with a friend. Leave us some comments. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Like <laughs> it, bro. Like, like it, please. People. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So sure. This is like after yeah. that, like my life mm-hmm. started mm-hmm. in Tashkent. It was right. I I reborn it once mm-hmm. more in Tashkent. You want to tell us a little about your SAT prep experience, right? SAT is one of the non-negotiables for college application. Like, so if you want to study abroad, they ask you to provide them with language proficiency certificate, an SAT score, right? Your GPA, essays, and, and extracurricular. Yeah, portfolio so stuff. You, you yeah. have to show some activities right. you yeah. do in and out of high school. I was yeah. really hoping if you could shed some more light on your college application process because so we, yeah, this is yeah. one of the parts that a lot of students out there think is a mystery. It's not as simple as IELTS. It's not as straightforward as SAT, right? So there are, there are a whole bunch of other pieces involved there. So, well, that'd be great if you could take some time to break things down for our audience here if they want to study abroad. So the most important thing to, before applying to universities, you have to find some people who in, uh, either who got into these top universities or who's preparing to get into these universities. Mm-hmm. I didn't have neither of them. So. Mm-hmm. And I found a guy named Rustam. Mm-hmm. He got he just got into Yale University. You're talking about Rustam Noor. Noor Rustam Noor. Yeah, wow, he's my great. friend. Yeah. I, I actually had him on the podcast. You had? Oh, yeah, last week. It's not out yet, okay. But by the time your podcast comes out, his podcast is going to be out. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 We used yeah. to live in the same apartment like for one year or something yeah. like this. Yeah. He's a great guy. I liked him. Yeah. I was classmate with his uh, brother, uh-huh. so that's how I got in touch with him. Mm-hmm. So he used to teach me a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Rustam Nur is a great guy. I'm mm-hmm. very grateful for him. Like I always used to ask questions: How can I do this? Mm-hmm. What should I do? Study mm-hmm. IELTS because mm-hmm. I had six, and I asked like, Do I have to get like seven mm-hmm. or seven point five? Do mm-hmm. I study? Do I have to study again? And how did you meet him? Were you guys going to the same school? I target I, and. He, an- he he used to teach in our school. He mm-hmm. used to teach SAT in our school. Target International yeah. School, right? Rustam Nur, uh-huh. Yeah, he yeah. was. He used to teach in that school, mm-hmm. and his brother was studying with me mm-hmm. in same school, and we used to live in the same room with his brother. Mm-hmm. Yes, you, you guys were roommates in dormitory. Yeah, yeah, got it. After like one month in dormitory, his brother offered me to move out to apartment. He said like I'm. Moving out with my brother. Mm-hmm. If you want to come, like mm-hmm. come with us. I said, like, who's your brother? He said, like, Rustam Nur. Mm-hmm. I'm like, Rustam Nur is your brother. I said, mm-hmm. he said, yes, I will definitely go. <laughs> I'm definitely coming, right? <laughs> definitely this is a great coming. connection, yeah. Yeah. Because like, I was always trying to get in touch with him uh, uh-huh. closely. I, I wanted to talk with him more, but I didn't have uh-huh. that much, that opportunity. Mm-hmm. But this was the best opportunity I could have. Just living in the same apartments is great. Mm-hmm. You can learn a lot from that. So mm-hmm. This is like three of us move, moved out to mm-hmm. the apartment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you guys, three of you guys moved in together and you had full access to that guy. Yeah, could, I had full access. Yeah, You could yeah. ask him any question you wanted, anytime yeah. you wanted. Yeah, like we, we always used to have like long conversations until like uh-huh. 2 a.m., 3 uh-huh. a.m. because like he had uh-huh. nothing to do. He just mm-hmm. had used to text his friends and mm-hmm. play some video, video games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like this is how I learned things from Rustam. Mm-hmm. If you want to concentrate, like that was the great part about Rustam. I remember his him playing uh, video games for eight to ten hours mm-hmm. nonstop. Mm-hmm. He was able to do that. Mm-hmm. I was like, how how come a guy can sit on uh, like in front of laptop for that long time? Uh-huh. Uh, they can if they are playing Dota. <laughs> yeah, the, I don't know. I don't understand yeah. the games at Cause, all. Yeah, because 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 my brother used to play Dota too. He'd stay up late, two, three o'clock in the morning, still be on his laptop, playing Dota with his friends online, and I'd hate it. I'd hate it, because what happened later on is he ended up getting poor eyesight, developing poor eyesight. Now he's gonna get a surgery later this this year, I guess. Plus, he developed sort of bad posture. Now he started hitting the gym, so trying to fix all that, you know, mm. trauma from playing video games. So yeah. uh, there are actually, th- there's a hidden cost to playing video games, guys. It's, it's going to take a huge toll on your body and your health. Sometimes it's not really worth it. But it's just, you can't help it, right? Yeah, yeah. So addicting. Uh, I, I said, like, how come a guy uh-huh. like, who plays video games, like, for that time, uh-huh. got into that top university, Yale. It was like mm-hmm. dream, dream for me, like, mm-hmm. Yale. 
and and it was also a dream just living in the same apartment with a guy who went into Yale. Mm-hmm. So then 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 I said like, oh, like you don't have to to mm-hmm. need that much knowledge to get got into mm-hmm. this university. Then I, I because I didn't saw him like study. Uh-huh. I didn't know how this guy study. Uh-huh. <laughs> how can, he study like, exactly? Uh, how can you possibly be studying when you're playing video games eight hours a day, right? Yeah. What are you doing? When do you sleep? What do you eat? Right? Yeah. But but right. like before going to college, like uh-huh. two, before two months, he, he said like he's going to do some something like political science back mm-hmm. then, mm-hmm. and he said like I, I have to learn, I have to improve my uh, literature and philosophy knowledge. Mm-hmm. Then he's he he used, started using uh, reading books. Mm-hmm. I remember him just sitting and reading like mm-hmm. books, like like same as like playing video games mm-hmm. he just used to sit on one place just open the book that's it mm-hmm. he just he, he he was able to finish like that 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 uh like long books uh-huh. within just two days wow. i was like how mm-hmm. I did, like then i like yeah i know right now how this guy got into university mm-hmm. if he wants to do something he will be focused on that thing 100 mm-hmm. percent mm-hmm. he just uh, leaves anything apart he doesn't like uh, he doesn't uh, disturb by, by his phone or anything. He just used to mm-hmm. um, sit on his uh, like workplace mm-hmm. and study, mm-hmm. read the book. And this is how I got like with a lot of people with Rustam Nur. I got I I extended my connection with people. This is how I got uh, how I met with Levsha. Mm-hmm. I was also a big fan of the Levsha mm-hmm. because like he was doing college application when I was in ninth grade. Mm-hmm. I was really big fan. I mm-hmm. always I, I always had that interesting question about mm-hmm. uh, for Levsha. Because like one night Levsha and Rustam Rustam Akia came to our house like very late. We, we were sleeping it was 1 a.m or something like this mm-hmm. and they started talking about like personal statement or mm-hmm. something and i'm like hey hey bro how are you Pro- probably levsha doesn't remember that was me mm-hmm. but i remember because i was the fan of levsha mm-hmm. and i said like bro why your nickname is levsha then, then i said like yeah just left-handed then i'm like oh, okay <laughs> like uh, okay like right. I, I was thinking too deeply about his nickname because yeah. like, what kind of, because you were just in awe and admiration like you yeah, were starstruck yeah. And Yesha like, sounded like very cool and confident. Like, uh, yeah, I'm like, oh, this guy. Uh-huh. I, I should be like more mm-hmm. like this guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was like really big fan of Yesha. So you would attribute part of your success to the fact that you were in the right environment with the right people. Exactly. Um, I am also that kind of person. Like I can, I also have like the bad friends who mm-hmm. smokes drinks mm-hmm. and parties mostly, mm-hmm. and I also have that that friends. Like who can study, mm-hmm. who can be the best at anything? Mm-hmm. Because of like I'm involved in both of them, I I I'm mm-hmm. the better than most of the people who are at the same age with me. Like mm-hmm. if I want to have fun, I can have fun too. Mm-hmm. But if I study, I can do this thing mm-hmm. because I can be the best at both of them. To be mm-hmm. honest, like if I want to be the bad guy, I can be the bad. But if I want to be the good, I can be the good too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, right. Yeah, this is how, what kind of mindset I usually think. Like, okay, you, like you have to study, just study. After that, mm-hmm. just for for the reward, mm-hmm. you can have fun. You, you want to go to mm-hmm. computer club, just go. You can mm-hmm. go there. You want to play some video games, play after that. Mm-hmm. But before that, I don't do anything for fun. Yeah, like work hard and party hard. Party right? hard. I'm that guy. <laughs> yeah. You're one of those guys. I see. So joining the right circle, being surrounded with the right people, with the right mindset is with one of the important things, most important things. So if I'm a guy who is just getting started with basic English and doesn't know much about college application, SAT or IELTS, so the best thing I can do is join a community. Yeah, join, just find some right people. Uh-huh, yeah. Join the right community. At least find some people who, who are doing the same thing as like uh, mm-hmm. like you mm-hmm. you want to study in top university just mm-hmm. find a guy who wants to study in top university mm-hmm. too so and you guys can figure things out together yeah together yeah, yeah and give each other a push feedbacks yeah mm-hmm. yeah that, that's uh, what mm-hmm. i think in terms of college application mm-hmm. but in target international school i was not that happy things mm-hmm. were not same as i expected mm-hmm. because like um because um i wanted different curriculum to be honest i mm-hmm. wanted the international cu- curriculum mm-hmm. um but no, it turned out they just have like 
English classes and math classes. That's it. Mm -hmm. And SAT. I can study like for the, for these two subjects for one million, mm -hmm. like five hundred for English, five hundred for math. That would be enough. Mm -hmm. But I'm paying like three millions, mm -hmm. and I'm and they sort of lied me mm -hmm. to be honest. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not happy because for that part. Mm -hmm. uh, from my school uh -huh. um they lied to me yeah like and then uh, like after some time I, like i realized that how this advertisement things work mm -hmm. like, uh, for those who, who's watching this whatever mm -hmm. you see on the internet or the advertisement it's not true mm -hmm. don't believe it until you see it mm -hmm. until you like catch it with your hand mm -hmm. yeah you, you don't have to believe anyone or anything mm -hmm. yeah i should concentrate more on anyone you don't mm -hmm. have to believe in the people that you are watching on the internet mm -hmm. because like they pretend like they're really good people they're helping to stu students in terms of like many things for example some so there are some people who's who's pretending that they are helping students students got into universities or some people who's helping students um to get some scholarship and mm -hmm. something like and most of them are scammers mm -hmm. so that's why you don't you don't have to guys believe in such people because like this is how i believe that my school was a very good and i said like this is international school mm -hmm. but it turned out like it's not like this but don't you think if it weren't for that school you wouldn't have met mr rustam nur you wouldn't have met rustam nur's brother you wouldn't have met all those other people so, yeah so part of the part of the reason why they overcharge people is because they're not just bringing you giving you that education but also creating an environment where you can go and meet like-minded people Okay, um, I think like I would but say like yes, but but still overpriced. Overpriced, like <laughs> yeah. Okay, I I know the Rustam Nur, like yeah. he worked there not too much. He worked like two or three months. Uh -huh. Then after like May, he left the mm -hmm. Tariyat. Then I'm like, no, I said like I don't want because like I never attended any of Rustam Nur's classes. Mm -hmm. They didn't let me to these classes. Mm -hmm. They told me that you will study in that special uh, group with guys who wants to study in USA but they didn't ex they mm. didn't allow me to study in that but group for some reason I they go. were comfortable with you being head of their youth union student body yeah. it was just one year ago uh -huh. I just elected to that position last year uh -huh. but, but we're talking back like three years ago mm -hmm. 2022 so would you say things are now different now things are better of course bro I changed my, uh, me and Najmuddin, uh -huh. the guy that came with me. Uh -huh. Like we changed our school to 118 percent mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. We made our school that international level mm -hmm. because, like, we we changed the curriculum. Mm -hmm. Right now, we are uh, trying. We have the access for AP exams, mm -hmm. like same as the U.S. schools. Wow. Um, um, and how did you guys get access to those materials? Uh, Do you have to? make a deal or get a partnership yeah, with yeah, one of the schools like over yeah. abroad it started with uh getting a ceb card like this mm -hmm. is like college board card uh -huh. so this is and where do you get it how do you apply for it uh on the college board mm -hmm. i mean you have to be school official for mm -hmm. that but mm -hmm. i did the old stuff but i can mm -hmm. say that on the camera i did the old work mm -hmm. um my school had no reputation within the tashkent mm -hmm. yeah they might have some reputation among the parents but they mm -hmm. didn't have any, any reputation among the students mm -hmm. uh, as, um, among the people who knows what uh, this this school's telling they didn't have any reputation mm -hmm. because they say like yes we will help this, your children to get into top university but they didn't help anyone in school mm -hmm. they didn't help anyone um, and, and they pretend like we are the international school we are the, we are this and that but they're not like this but uh, I was I really like the founder of our school. He had he's a really good guy, Big Zoja Lilif, and he helped me a lot mm -hmm. in a lot of things. But he's he has he doesn't have like good um, co-workers, I would say, mm -hmm. because like a lot of uh, employees of him lies to him about mm -hmm. a lot of things. Um, yeah, they don't understand English, so I can tell this. Yeah. So they he they scam him with money and everything. Mm -hmm. I know these no, things this too. This is no good. This is no yeah. good. That's a lot of dirt you're pulling on that school right now. I I just I I know how hard it is to build a good team. It's one of the hardest thing about setting up your own school or starting your own venture. It's not getting clients. It's not building the product. It's having the right people on your team. I remember reading a book called Good to Great, which is basically about leadership 
And it talks about different kinds of re le leaders. There is level one, level two, level three. And, and to get to level five, you have to be a kind of a leader whose team will last long after you're gone, right? The quality of your leadership is not exactly measured by how much money you're making for the company or how much uh, of an impact you're, you're making on your community, but rather how long your team lasts after you've left, right? So how good of a team you've built over your tenure, right? Yeah, like he really wants to make his school great, but he mm. doesn't have anyone in, mm. in his team yeah. with the same goal. Yeah. Then I said, why not me? Mm -hmm. I said, like, okay, I will have, help that guy mm -hmm. to get th this level because mm -hmm. like, as I said, like after two months, I said like, I don't have, we don't have that much money to pay. Then mm -hmm. I, I need, I said, I need some scholarships mm -hmm. and he didn't get anything from me after that. Mm -hmm. I just paid for school for two months. After mm -hmm. that, I didn't pay anything. Mm -hmm. So sure. th that guy, the big Zodja Lilith, understood my situation and my family situation. Mm -hmm. So then like, I said, okay, it was like after that, after like one year, even though it was after one year, I said like, okay, I will help this guy to make his school great. Mm -hmm. So I tried to my best to make this school international because you have, there are like, you know, the organization, college board, the guys mm -hmm. will take the SATs mm -hmm. with this, with this uh, organization. Yeah. And it's the IELTS equivalent of, it's the SAT equivalent of IELTS, right? Um, no, this is like, we can say it's DTM of, mm -hmm. of like North America. Oh, yeah. It's the college it. board. Yes. They, yep. they take some tests, mm -hmm. they apply universities through this mm -hmm. organization. So not just on math not and only, English, yeah. other subjects included yeah, as they, well. They have like AP exams, uh -huh. um, they have pre-SAT, PSAT, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. say, a lot of examinations. So uh, basically to be to be technically considered an international school, you have to be partners with college board. Yes. And y and your school, ha your school's name has to be on that list mm -hmm. among the schools. Wow. I see. Yeah. So like this, this was my goal mm -hmm. in, in like 2023, mm -hmm. in the beginning of 2023. Right. Like I didn't tell, told this to Big Zod Jalil. Mm -hmm. I was just doing this. Okay. Mm -hmm. I will help this guy. Mm -hmm. I was doing this, mm -hmm. and, and I, on my way, I found Najmuddin and mm -hmm. some guys who helped me. Mm -hmm. So we had we needed some website for mm -hmm. our school. Uh, we had some documentations. Mm -hmm. I did all of them by myself, and and Najmuddin helped me in most parts. And like we tried like four, four times, they just rejected. Mm -hmm. No, we cannot approve your school. Mm -hmm. There is problem with this uh, mm -hmm. that, and that. And in, I think in, it was in October, like after like 10 months, mm -hmm. they said like, oh, yeah, okay, we're approving your school. Oh, wow. In 10 months, like we got approved and we got that mm -hmm. CEB card. Right now, then, then I said, I called my big Zajali, I said, right now we can call our school international because mm -hmm. it's international mm -hmm. from this time. Now you have that official stamp. Official stamp, yeah. Stamp, you have that official and badge. After that, like universities, for example, uh -huh. Before I applied to university, because I applied in August, University of Toronto didn't know about Target International School. Mm -hmm. Right now, like any any student who wants to apply University of Toronto or who wants to apply the scholarship that I got, they have like a lot of privilege mm -hmm. because like I am from this school and this school was not listed mm -hmm. just one year ago. Mm -hmm. It's been just one year and I got this scholarship mm -hmm. within a year. That's great achievement for the school. It is. It really is. Like yeah. Big plus. So it's a big plus if your school is registered on College Board yeah, website. Yeah, this is somehow they believe the words of the school mm -hmm. if they are registered. Uh -huh. For example, just random dude from like school number 15 applies mm -hmm. to the U.S. universities. And your GP, GPA is GPA, five. Like five. They don't believe it. They don't believe it. But <laughs> yeah. right now, if someone applies to any university uh -huh. from... Mm -hmm. Any university f from Target International School, they believe it because from this year we are on the Common App, the, the mm -hmm. platform that students apply to U.S. universities, mm -hmm. or the College Board. We have a SAT, a SAT test mm -hmm. center right now. We, t we we organize SAT test centers in uh -huh. our school. Wow! So that means it's a big advantage if your school is listed on the College Board website, like or and college application. A uh, college app, common, common app, app, common app. app. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they call it. Yes, sorry. So common app. 
So you would say it increases your odds of getting into university if your school is listed. Yeah, it basically website. says, yeah, this school exists mm-hmm. in, in some part of the world. Yeah, this, mm-hmm. for example, they might know, they might not know the target international school, but they believe that this school is exist in mm-hmm. some part of the world. Yeah. So mm-hmm. Even if you apply some, uh, mm-hmm. just not, not only universities, any kind of competition, if you apply and you said you're from this school, you, for our school students have a lot of privilege mm-hmm. just being student of our school. Mm-hmm. Because like Najman didn't apply, there is a summer camp mm-hmm. that happens in Abu Dhabi. Wow. So he, he applied from Target International School. Our school was listed in that platform. Mm-hmm. He, he won that. Wow. There was there was like very odds were like very low mm-hmm. acceptance rate. How many, how many percent? Was like, very low. Yeah, mm-hmm. only like fifty three students was selected mm-hmm. in whole world. There were like mm-hmm. seven thousand applicants or something like wow. this. And he went there. Yeah, they can. After that moment, like after the October moment, like after our school was on this list, there, there is like. 5,000 s- schools among in, in all around the world mm-hmm. on this college board. Mm-hmm. So we are one of that schools. Wow. And yeah. I guess that's the next mission for the school at Astra, right? To get verified on college board. Uh, that's going to take some grinding. I mean, that's going to take some breaking sweat. But guys watching this podcast and Ad Astrians, Ad Astrians will get there soon. Yeah. yeah we'll get uh, there. That, that's, we'll that, catch up. <laughs> Yeah, if you need any help, like I can help. Oh, I appreciate like, that. That, it that turns means out, a lot. It turns out like it's very mm-hmm. easy process. We just mm-hmm. didn't know what to do because mm-hmm. we didn't we didn't have any instructions or we didn't have any mm-hmm. uh, roadmap on mm-hmm. how to do the things. Mm-hmm. So that's why we had a lot of problems mm-hmm. um, on registering that thing, college board. Mm-hmm. Then after that, then we asked to be the SAT test center, mm-hmm. and we, it got approved after like two three months. Mm-hmm. Or so. Then we ask to be the AP test center and, uh, and they approve it to, yeah. You get you get any privileges for being SAT test center, like say free seats or or any uh, sort of compensation? People use it to say like this because like mm-hmm. I am, the, I'm not officially, but I am the SAT main coordinator in mm-hmm. our school uh, since the May. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, for the people who's watching this and mm-hmm. you might say like, okay, this guy has SAT test center and he faked his SAT. No guys, um, we got approved for the SAT test mm-hmm. center, SAT test center in May. Mm-hmm. So we have that access to organize SATs from May. But I, I took my last test, test, I think in March. And what was yeah. your, what, what's your SAT score? What'd you get um, on your last attempt? It's 1490 right now. It's yeah. super score uh, mm-hmm. because like I got 1450 in December. Mm-hmm. This is a score that I applied to most schools, mm-hmm. most universities, 1450. Uh, after that, I just took the test for fun. Mm-hmm. Like I said like, let's see what happens. Mm-hmm. I, I got 1417, then mm-hmm. I combined it like two uh, higher scores. I think you know how, what, how super score works. Yeah, it right? is. I had Mr. Bubba John on the podcast. He yeah. got SAT 1600 super score. Yeah, I, yeah. I had like 1419. Like and it's s- as legitimate as actual SAT 1600, right? Yeah, because yeah. It that's w- not something you can do with IELTS. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, But there is something like one subject, one yeah. section uh-huh. retake or something like yeah. this. Yeah, one score retake. One score retake. One yeah, score yeah. retake. But I talked to a DP official, not official, some guys who work at, IDP and they're, they they didn't directly say one school retake is not as valid as the actual certificate, but they sort of implied that. Yeah, it, it's, that, it's also the same with the super score because mm-hmm. some universities, for example, in Qatar, they mm-hmm. don't accept super scores. Mm-hmm. Or and there might be some other universities also who doesn't accept super scores. Mm-hmm. For example, in Europe, most universities does not accept super score. Uh, for just one examination, I got like 1470, but mm-hmm. for super score, I got 1419. Mm-hmm. The thing is like, I got like 720 in English section mm-hmm. out of 800 and mm-hmm. 770 for math. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, as I said, like after that fifth or eighth, uh, like sixth grade, I didn't study math. Mm-hmm. Still, I didn't have any, mm-hmm. I didn't improve my math at all. And SAT math is not as hard as many people think, right? It's just school math. Yeah, you right? just have to study. You just mm-hmm. have to sit on the desk and you mm-hmm. have to study. Mm-hmm. That's something I didn't do. That's mm-hmm. why I don't have that that so cool score. If, if you had put in a little more work, you would have got 
the perfect score in math, right? 800 out of 800. Um, I don't believe that I would be able to do this mm-hmm. because I tried I tried my best to get this score mm-hmm. because this was the best score I, I was able to get. And that was 770, right? What do you mean? Yeah, the, the math, math yeah, part. Yeah, yeah, it was 770. Uh-huh. Yeah, this was the best score I was able to get. Um, mm-hmm. So I think, no. I thought, like, there are some guys, who, for example, in IELTS too, there are some people who take IELTS again and again mm-hmm. after they get, like, what they wanted in the first place. Mm-hmm. But I, I needed, I need, I wanted 1500 plus, but I didn't get it. But there was some things mm-hmm. other than this. Mm-hmm. Applying universities. My main goal from getting SAT is getting to top university mm-hmm. and winning the scholarship or at least getting financial aid mm-hmm. like the most people do. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if I focused more on SAT, because I didn't study studied SAT like full time, mm-hmm. I could only do like two hours mm-hmm. at most in mm-hmm. one day. And it was not consistent. I didn't do the things every day because I was more focused on college application mm-hmm. rather than uh, test scores. And you actually did the right thing because all the other guys I had on the podcast who have some experience doing college application were telling me that IELTS and SAT only make up 30% of the all all the work, roughly 30% of all the work. The bulk of the work is the essays you write and the extracurriculars you do, right? Yeah. And I think, and I'm guessing you didn't have any trouble with your extracurriculars since you had been involved in yeah, so many things, so many different events since you were in seventh grade. So that part must have come real easy. Yeah, yeah. Then, then like, because I know there are a lot of guys with SAT 1550, 1560, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. even even higher. Like, because like mine is 1490. This is like top top five percent. Mm-hmm. This is like only top five percent of test takers has this SAT score. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, it really is. But right. like, there are like fifteen fifty mm-hmm. or fifteen sixteen guys with that kind of SAT scores. They didn't get into any universities, so that's the whole point. They just, they just for forgot what they were doing. Mm-hmm. Was like they started studying SAT, just got into university mm-hmm. mostly. Mm-hmm. But why? Why they are like focusing? focus that much time on SAT mm-hmm. or only I, I only recommend for those who wants to teach SAT after like this journey mm-hmm. to study SAT that much but, but but if you don't want to teach SAT you don't need that kind of um you don't need that kind of score mm-hmm. if if you get like something that you wanted at the first place that's it you have mm-hmm. to stop yeah, you should know when to stop. You should know the right time to stop. Yeah, this is so right because sometimes students just get so hung up on getting the max score that they forget all the other things. So that's not smart either. So, uh, speaking of your university, would you like to talk a little about what it was like finding out getting into university? So, how did you feel? What was your reaction when you found out you got into University of Toronto in Canada? My reaction for that? Yeah, yeah. Like when you heard, when you received that email saying, "Dear Mister Diarbek Namazov." No, actually, yeah. the, my college journey was uh, different than most of the people because, like, mm-hmm. as I said, like, I had like great networking with people. Mm-hmm. I knew some great guys in terms of college application, but because uh, after, because of that, like, I started everything too early, mm-hmm. even though I didn't have the test scores because, like, I I had only six back in the day, so I had to retake it. So in in this December 2022, I think, uh, uh, like 2020 or 2023, early, sometimes mm-hmm. I was 16, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, I was sitting in Diorbeck Health Test mm-hmm. Center. I think you know that guy. Oh, yeah, he's a big guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. He's, he's a great guy. I, this is how I first knew about you. Like uh-huh. He used to share some your some of your essays and mm-hmm. Ali Cherekas essays. Mm-hmm. So this is how I knew that mm-hmm. two of you guys. Yeah. And yeah. I hope I really hope like one day I can have him on the podcast. I've been trying to get a hold of this guy. I mean I did get a hold of this guy. We we had we exchanged a few messages. He said he'd come sometime, you know, late uh, yeah, August. I know who, this guy uh, like Yeah, I'm I'm hoping we'll see him one day on the show. Okay. Sit yeah. down for a talk. Guys, let us know if you want to see Mr. Diarbek on the podcast. Uh, no, the the Arbeck Isles. The Arbeck Isles. Yeah. Like, yeah. You should come to this podcast. This is amazing. 
yeah we Thanks. still talk with him yeah we, yeah. we text each other we oh, meet please sometime. Yeah. please after the to- podcast i'd really appreciate it if you could reach reach out to him share your experiences yeah of course, experience of course. Of after this like, we will send some media to him okay yeah. oh, sure sure yeah fantastic uh, yeah, uh-huh. the, like Dorbeka uh-huh. helped me to get IELTS seven because mm-hmm. this is what I wanted. So I took, I mm-hmm. prepared with him like for one month. Mm-hmm. His intensive group. Mm-hmm. I took the test and I got seven. So within the, within a month, he helps you go from six to seven. Uh, yeah, I had some background mm-hmm. because like I was doing still English. Mm-hmm. I didn't like stop learning mm-hmm. English because I was reading some books. I was mm-hmm. learning about college application. Mm-hmm. I was reading some philosophy. Then mm-hmm. that's why like. I just needed some SEL strategies. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the only reason I went to the Dior, Dior Center I just just only because I was uh, his fan. Uh-huh. It was just good way of getting to know each other uh-huh. with random people. Yeah. Because like uh, when I was learning English in Hawaii, he, he he wrote a post in his Telegram channel that he's going to the US, and I was like, wow, mm-hmm. this guy from Hawaii. Mm-hmm. Right now, going to the US. Mm-hmm. And like, what am I doing with my what life? What am I doing with it? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I was a big fan of him too. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to uh, to get to know with him like mm-hmm. closer. Mm-hmm. Wanted to be <coughs> with him closer. So that's why I went to his le- learning. Because there were some teachers in my school too. Mm-hmm. Because like I was like doing some uh, teacher assistant work mm-hmm. in my school. But mm-hmm. I was going to the Arbex Learning Center yeah. to study. Yeah. I just wanted to be closer with him. Uh-huh. Yeah. As I yeah, said, his, like, his reputation precedes him for sure. Yeah. Yeah. He's as I said, a lot like, of people, he's still helping a lot of people online. Yeah. Yeah. Networking is very important. Mm-hmm. As I said, like, that's why I always get to know with, if I saw a guy who's great mm-hmm. and he was making like a lot of good things, I just wanted to know him mm-hmm. because like, like just, I didn't know those guys like one week ago, mm-hmm. we just had a competition, as I said, on mm-hmm. 27th. Mm-hmm. That's why we reschedule, rescheduled the podcast. Oh, I, see. I met with these guys on that, on uh-huh. this event. Uh-huh. So see. yeah, you like, right now mm-hmm. I know this guys and this guys are showing me the city. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like, that's right, why you right. need networking. So. Yeah, it is. It's one of the important things. Going back to your university, getting into university reaction, like would you, what was your, reaction to finding out that you won a scholarship that you didn't just win a scholarship that, that's a full ride scholarship and for those people who don't know what full ride scholarship is is when you, your university uh, covers all your expenses your travel accommodation and do they also give you some pocket money um the only thing they don't cover in my scholarship they don't cover my flights uh-huh uh, this is not like fully full ride uh, mm-hmm. if you want to say it mm-hmm. because like they don't pay for my tickets mm-hmm. uh, but they give like 2000 uh, like pocket money wow yeah every month or annually uh, at, in every semester every semester every so that adds up to $8000 a year no it not it's like how many two, semesters you guys spend? two, two sem- semesters okay four four thousand dollars four thousand yeah it's like a stipend it's, uh, it's something like, like this stipend, yeah right yeah i can buy tickets for this uh-huh. one yeah. Oh, yeah 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 right. something like this yeah yeah so and what what major are you going to be doing at this university because your cv shows you're you're a tech guy you're into technology you're into yeah. building things so why you want to study technology at okay. this university? Let's let's do something like this. Uh-huh. Yeah, I got this IELTS seven. I was studying SAT. Then mm-hmm. let's talk about my journey in this college application and SAT at the same time. Sure, sure. Because like sure. I can't move on to that that part before uh-huh. telling you about how my college application. Because that uh-huh. was the part I was really depressed. Uh-huh. Last year was very depressing to me. Uh-huh. Even the early early part of this year too, uh-huh. because like. I was taking part some college application courses. I was learning some things from people. Mm-hmm. Um, then I, I, my main goal was U.S. universities, as I said, but I was not really good at SAT. I was taking the test. Like I took the test multiple times. I improved. My first SAT score was 1310, and my last one is 1470. So this was the only progress I was able to make. Um, then I didn't want to apply universities with 1450. Because I thought, like, uh, with this score, yes, I can get into some universities, some average universities, let's say, but I can't get this full scholarship. So that's why I went with test optional to most universities, and I only applied, I, I only sent my score to some average universities. So after everything, I applied, like, 47 or, 40, like, 50 U.S. universities. Mm-hmm. 50. 50. And that's, is that the max? 
Is that no, there is no limit. There's no limit. There is no so limit. That's what's great about Common App. You can build your own. No, portal. on Common App there is like twenty. Uh huh. But there is another website, and you have to pay to each college you mm-hmm. apply in that platform. Mm-hmm. But with Common App, it's free of charge. Yeah, for twenty universities, free of charge. Uh huh. Yeah, I apply like fifty U.S. universities. Mm-hmm. I usually say forty-five or fifty. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, so many. Mm-hmm. I only applied like one Canadian university, mm-hmm. and it was University of Toronto. Mm-hmm. So I. Um, when he was getting mentorship from uh, Askar, he's a Kazakh guy, mm-hmm. so he was teaching me how to apply colleges. Mm-hmm. Um, so he told me that there is the university that that's the University of Toronto, basically, and they have the only one scholarship mm-hmm. that, that's full right. It's, what is it called? Less- Lester B. Pearson Scholarship. Uh-huh. So only thirty-seven students all around the world mm-hmm. even uh, some international students within the canada get this scholarship and acceptance rate was like lower than one percent no lower than two percent i actually looked it up literally the other day um yeah, yeah if you look up the internet like mm-hmm. they say like 1.67 68, did you see the, yeah. 68 or something like this yeah uh-huh. i also saw that something like this and after that after i got this scholarship they gave me statistics mm-hmm. and they they sent me the how many students applied to this uh, scholarship mm-hmm. and how many of them got this scholarship mm-hmm. uh, like believe me it was like lower than one percent mm-hmm. wow. i don't want to get any credits for this but mm-hmm. i just like i you just uh, realize how lucky you are yeah, when you see just that number. Like, I, I don't say in any podcast or uh-huh. any interview that I'm not good at. I'm I was I'm not good as many like guys like mm-hmm. who sit on this podcast or with mm-hmm. there are many great guys who go, who couldn't get into some universities, mm-hmm. but they are like way more stronger and smarter than me. Mm-hmm. I'm just a like lucky guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the only thing about me. Like, yeah. Um yeah, only University of Toronto, and they have this scholarship, and they give only one to two, one to three students f- from the Central Asia. They said, mm-hmm. "I know that you, your school is not that competitive, and you are not that competent because he was recommending me University of Toronto because, like, he had some kind of vision that I was not, I will not be able to get like mm-hmm. to that Ivy universities, mm-hmm. like Harvard, Stanford, something yeah, like this." Yeah, I see. You're talking about Oscar, right? Askar. Yeah. So he did not recommend that you apply for, apply to. He, he said like, okay, we can apply to this university, but without SAT, mm-hmm. because like I had like fourteen, I had no, I, I had like something like fourteen hundred score mm-hmm. SAT score. So he said like, no, we can apply this university with this SAT score. Mm-hmm. Then he said like, you should look up for more opportunities in different countries too, and only country I considered was. Uh, Canada because it was close to the US mm-hmm. and and I said like if there are some good campuses in of US universities in different countries yes I would consider mm-hmm. the University of Toronto Lister B. Pearson scholarship only 37 winners mm-hmm. I tried to look out for Uzbek winners of this scholarship mm-hmm. I did because uh, on their website you can find all of the winners mm-hmm. if you try to look up for this mm-hmm. and there were uh, last year there were not any Uzbek students, but I could only find one guy who has Uzbek background and he's U.S. citizen or something like mm-hmm. this, because his name was Uzbek, mm-hmm. something close to Uzbek. Mm-hmm. I, I think I think he was he definitely had some Uzbek mm-hmm. background. He yeah. didn't say he's Uzbek, mm-hmm. but he was Uzbek for me. And mm-hmm. I'm like, no one got this scholarship from Uzbekistan. Mm-hmm. I, and, and so I, you made history. You were the f- one of the first guys the from first Uzbekistan guys. to win yeah, that. There is scholarship. one more guy who got this scholarship uh-huh. with me this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. There is one more guy who uh-huh. got this scholarship from Samarkand. Wow, impressive. <laughs> right, and uh, I wonder if your university is the same university where Jordan Peterson teaches. He uses used to, to teach, teach there, yeah, right? He used to teach university until like 2021. Of- yeah. Yeah. The other day on social media, I I saw his post about his university, online university. He started oh. an online university. I don't know that. Yeah, and he's coming to Tashkent, I guess. Are you kidding me? Yeah, Jordan Peterson. Yeah, is coming. to that Central Asian University. You know the the old Aqua University. Uh huh. He's coming to that university. Oh my god! That's I, I watch advertisement somewhere. Yeah. Is there any way I can have him on the podcast? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that would be I, awesome. I yeah. That would be boom. please, please, guys, get me Jordan Peterson's contact. Okay, I'll hit him up. Let's get him on the podcast. Yeah, let's talk. 
I Assam. think he will come to Uzbekistan uh-huh. later this year. Yeah. Uh-huh. And if, if, if guys, I were in Uzbekistan. If any one of you guys happen to go to that event, please, please, please tell him about this podcast, okay? Let's have yeah. Jordan Peterson on the podcast. Yeah. I, I would insane. also love to be in his like uh-huh. event, lecture, uh-huh. but unfortunately he doesn't teach anymore in the yeah. University of Toronto. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, going back to your university major, technology, you still didn't quite tell us why you want to study technology. Yeah, the reason why I didn't mm-hmm. uh, focus on SAT and things is because I was doing some extracurricular stuff. Mm-hmm. Because I, I knew that I will apply with engineering, but I didn't have that much mm-hmm. strong things about my major. Mm-hmm. I, I knew that I, have, I was good at leadership and that kind of stuff, but I didn't have things related to my major. Mm-hmm. This is what my uh, mentors recommended, my friends also, mm-hmm. Rustam, recommended me this. So um, I went there, I went back to the Nawai because there are a lot of things you can do as in like computer science or engineering applicant. Mm-hmm. So there is a company called Nawai Mining and Metallurgical Company, mm-hmm. NKMK, they say in Nawai. So uh, my, my father works, actually works in that company. Mm-hmm. I talked with him. I said, like, I need some internship in that company. Mm-hmm. I want to learn how people work in that company. Mm-hmm. He said, no, no, you, you will regret for this decision. I said, okay, just get me there. I mm-hmm. want to work here. Mm-hmm. He just let me talk with his boss. Mm-hmm. I talked with him. I said about my ambitions. Mm-hmm. I said, I want to study in top universities. Mm-hmm. I want to come back. I want to Im- improve this country mm-hmm. in terms of everything. Mm-hmm. I will do my best to be to make this country great mm-hmm. um so he let me do internship for one month in that company mm-hmm. and if i remember the last year it was in april i think i went to the the mine in april mm-hmm. and it was i don't want to remember like my my experience because people were like working under like very bad conditions there was not uh what kind of a mine was it? Is it a coal mine? Gold mine. Gold yeah. mine. Okay. Gold, so gold what is mine. it like working in a gold mine? So I mean, the conditions were very harsh. Mm-hmm. You can't even breathe uh, freely mm-hmm. under that like six hundred meters down to the mm-hmm. down the earth. Mm-hmm. So you can't breathe freely, and uh, and every every everywhere was dust. And so that's why. And, and do people have some kind of a mask? Yeah, ma- just a regular mask. Um, or breathing equipment. What do no, they got? No, like there is some roads, and when you're going from uh, going uh, on these roads, there were dust. And like, yes, people sometimes have masks. It depends on the, what kind of job they do. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I work. I worked as a pumper. I, I helped them to get uh, water and uh, like air mm-hmm. under that. Um, mine. Mm-hmm. What was it? Pumper or something? Mm-hmm. Pumper. Mm-hmm. There is a word something like this. Uh, what's that? What are you trying to describe? What? what is, no, can no, no, I, check? I can't. I can't help you with that. What do you? What is it? So is it kind kind of a device? Uh, pumper. Plumber. No. Oh, plumber. Is someone who does plumbing? No, no, no. It wasn't. It was close to plumber. Something like mm-hmm. this. So you help to mm-hmm. to workers mm-hmm. to get air. Uh-huh. Under that, there was position something like this. Yeah, this is like vent- ventilation guy. Ventilation guy, guy in charge of ventilation. Something this, like this, yeah. Yeah, or someone who pumps air down. You don't pump actually, mm-hmm. but, but but there are machines. But mm-hmm. you, you just take care of the machines. They mm-hmm. may stop at any mm-hmm. time, so you should make sure it's working yeah. properly. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is what I did and. While it was, it was even though it was only my job, I just used to go a different part. Even though, like sometimes mm-hmm. that the security because like it's related to government thing, mm-hmm. it's gold. Mm-hmm. And what does a gold mine look like? Uh, Is it like dark? One, <laughs> dark. Um, not, some not some like, part of not the, like not like what you see in movies where they show a lot of gold. Uh, no, no, it's <laughs> not like nothing this. like just, that. Just just some stones. Everywhere yeah, is yeah. stones, and it gets uh, refined. In a, in a mine. It doesn't uh, like re- refine inside this mine. Mm-hmm. They just uh, just take some stones uh-huh. out of this uh, mine pit. That's uh-huh. it. Okay. Other, we, I don't see. I didn't see to be honest the other process mm-hmm. because like the government does this and they mm-hmm. will be in some factories. Mm-hmm. I was on. I was only saw this process of uh, 
miming that stones from deep down in the earth. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like, and even if you, inside this mines, if you need some sort of help, for example, you got injured mm-hmm. because like when the car were, car was moving, mm-hmm. there is very high risk of a big stone uh, falling into your leg. Oh also. my God. That's I mean, so you don't dangerous. know, you don't know that yet. That's so so they, 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 because like, uh, we have one neighbor mm-hmm. uh, who broke his leg and he couldn't like walk for six years or something like this. He, he, he used to have like medical surgeries mm-hmm. back to back mm-hmm. for six years. He got oh like too many, I don't remember how many surgeries, but he, he mm-hmm. used to have a lot of surgeries, mm-hmm. at least like three to four surgeries every year My God. for six years. Mm-hmm. And he was not even just a regular work. He was in the bigger position. He mm-hmm. was one of the big guys. Uh-huh. Just one of the days, just random day he mm-hmm. went that's inside the mine uh-huh. because a lot of people just stone fell into his leg. Oh my God. So he, he broke his leg. So he, and so if you get injured, who's going to come to your rescue? Are you going to get immediately? There is no immediate help. That's the whole point. Uh-huh. If, if there are workers with you, they can help you. But if, the, if there is no one, mm-hmm. it, it's like really bad. You can't get out of that mm-hmm. mine yourself because you got injured mm-hmm. and it's very hard even walk yeah. I'm, I'm, like I'm, it's I'm, very like something like this it's uh-huh. not like just a regular road it's, uh-huh. it's something like this you should go down yeah and steep. you can go up I with see. broken leg yeah just it sounds like one of those horror movies yeah where something it, terrible something, terribly goes wrong and then you're stuck there in that cave yeah right? that that's like I, I saw like this is a gold mine. Mm-hmm. They have a lot of money, and mm-hmm. I saw that because like you see a lot of fancy cars going mm-hmm. inside this. Like mm-hmm. not fancy, I mean not Rolls Royce or something like uh-huh. like fancy that big uh, mm-hmm. cars that that SUVs uh, right SUVs not SUVs no 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 I mean I don't mean that kind of cars yeah, heavy duty cars yeah yeah something heavy like duty that. trucks trucks some sort yeah. of trucks uh huh. They, so some, you, some you assume they, that they're digging a lot of gold out of that place so everyone must be rich yeah i said like they might work under a really good condition mm-hmm. i said like but it turned out like conditions were very poor mm-hmm. then i did some did research with professor mm-hmm. i met in this this mine. he was doing some experience in mm-hmm. this mine mm-hmm. and i said oh i'm applying this universities this is mm-hmm. universities and he kind of saw the passion in me then he told me like can you help me to do that research mm-hmm. and i said why not this is how i got into this research thing mm-hmm. then i helped with his research mm-hmm. uh, then we did some projects with him mm-hmm. so we we wanted to give that because we knew i knew the person who got injured in that mind mm-hmm. so i wanted to change this i didn't want my father to get injury in this mm-hmm. mind and i didn't want him to stay there like for four to five hours mm-hmm. until someone sees him and helps him mm-hmm. so we we tried to work uh, uh, for the system that can put some um detectors to each worker's clothes mm-hmm. so uh, they can track uh, uh, like all of their employees under their mind. So we we introduced the plan um, plan of this uh, ecosystem under this mind, and we asked for them investment. And the uh, yeah, they helped us a lot. So we got like fifteen thousand US, do- almost fifteen thousand US dollars. It was like mm-hmm. one hundred eighty million sums. Mm-hmm. They they granted that much mm-hmm. loan for us. Uh, to start our um, it wasn't even the whole project we just had to give them prototype mm-hmm. we, we just needed the prototype uh, I helped with my team uh, with my friends to to make this um, this prototype so for like 15,000 US dollars mm-hmm. yeah we gave them that prototype Mm-hmm. Even though we didn't make any profit out of it, mm-hmm. so I, I right now they are working on it. They are mm-hmm. trying to implement this project mm-hmm. under the, all of the mines. They have like seventeen or more than seventeen mines mm-hmm. in in all parts of the Nawai, mm-hmm. and there are some mines in Samarkand which is belonged to the same company. We gave them that prototype, so they are trying to implement it all mm-hmm. all of their uh, mines. So this was some sort of private thing they did mm-hmm. uh, with it to be honest because like i was having this one one-to-one conversation with uh, kind of the big guys in company because mm-hmm. i was just uh, 
just a ch- child of that one regular stuff. Mm-hmm. So this is why I didn't tell this in too many places. This is how me and the, my, my professor mm-hmm. this made this prototype mm-hmm. with a lot of guys, of course the tech guys. Mm-hmm. With this, we made this prototype and got this like fifteen thousand the loan to implement this pro- project. Mm-hmm. So with the device you guys built, you or you helped build. Now, if anyone in those mines gets injured, they can so, they can easily be tracked down and found and so someone can go to their rescue and save them. Basically, before they can track all of the uh, employees mm-hmm. so they can see what uh, which part of the mine is the employee. Mm-hmm. After that, if they got some sort of injury, there are three buttons. Each, each of them has their function. Mm-hmm. If they click, well, for example, if they need some uh, first kit, for example, they need help, they just press it. Mm-hmm. Someone will help and and can help it. But if you don't have such, uh, for example, don't close with detectors, I mean, you can you can even stay there like for days if no one just uh, walks away from this mm-hmm. place Walk, of the mine. You. Yeah. yeah if, if, if they, they, they don't, if they don't see you, like that's it. You might actually die. Yeah. In one of those because, mines. Because there are 53 people dies every year in this company. 53. 53. It's just, it's a statistic of 2022. I don't know mm-hmm. what happened in 2023, mm-hmm. but I mean, this is what happened. the number has gone down ever since you guys introduced those Yeah, they, are, they haven't implemented in all of the mines. Mm-hmm. They are working in only a few of them, mm-hmm. but I, they promised us to implement this in all of the mines. So mm-hmm. I hope things will be better, like at least in the next five years, I hope. Yeah. So now I see why you decided to pursue technology, study technology. So at this, this is university. how like, I got this passion mm-hmm. for the engineering thing. Mm-hmm. Because like with engineering, you can solve a lot of problems in your mm-hmm. community mm-hmm. because it was the community I grew up with mm-hmm. because like because if you know the Nawai like there are a lot of factories mm-hmm. all most of the people work in factories so you see a lot such bad news someone got injured someone mm-hmm. died under the spit some some got mm-hmm. uh, electric shock oh God. yeah something like this yeah this is like so this the, happens a lot. The only way to fix those issues would be to innovate better technologies. So yeah. there's less human input. There are fewer people involved. Yeah. Right. I, I, I always say like, even though I cannot solve these problems and I, I will not regret at the end that I didn't try it. Mm-hmm. I, I tried my best to make changes. Mm-hmm. I know that the projects that I gave them didn't maybe will not help at all but at least i tried to help i as just a, like 16 years old kid i was 16 back in the day mm-hmm. or 17 i i tried my best to help these people mm-hmm. so i think like even though after like 10 or 20 years even if i can change the whole community all whole the community of people working in, in these factories even though i can't help them at least I tried my best to improve their condition, working condition. If I if I will be able to do this even like 10%, like I would be happy. Mm-hmm. So this is my goal, some sort of like just getting, get, like this is why I I wanted to pursue the engineering. Mm-hmm. So yeah. back to college application thing. Yeah. So yeah. I was doing these extracurricular activities but not studying SAT mm-hmm. because I had more interesting things than studying SAT. I mean, for sure, helping people and saving their lives, innovating things that ease people's burden is way more important than doing standardized tests like IELTS and SAT. If anything, massive respect, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I, I, I honestly respect engineers, okay? I uh, So here's the thing about engineers. They are some of the few people in the world who are pushing our civilization forward. There are some of the people, some of the few people in the world who are building things that ease our lives, our burden. If it weren't for engineers, we wouldn't be having this podcast right now, wouldn't have this AC here, wouldn't have all these lights, wouldn't have this building. So it's thanks to engineers that we have all these cities, technologies and wonders and appliances that, that make up our modern life today, which would be you know, impossible to imagine, you know, living without engineering would be back in dark ages. Yeah. It'd be no different than living in a cage. Right. Yeah. Right. 
then then mm-hmm. then I'm like I will be the, the one of the best engineers mm-hmm. because like and as an applicant too like I mm-hmm. I said like I will be one of the best applicants engineering applicants who's applying to US universities mm-hmm. even though like like this SAT test then like I said like okay if if I can't get this 1500 I can just take a test I can just go with test optional policy and in the August, like everything started, colleges started accepting students' ex- applications. So I applied some uh, universities without SAT. Mm-hmm. Mm. And the mistake I did in my college application, I applied liberal art colleges with ingi- with strong engineering background, mm-hmm. with strong tech background. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, that's yeah. why I, I said like I got rejected like more than twenty universities mm-hmm. out of that fifty mm-hmm. in my list. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I, the only universities I got in, uh, I, I got in, I will only list like top top of them, like NYU, Shanghai. I got into mm-hmm. that. It's not top at all right now mm-hmm. because like many Uzbeks got into this university, mm-hmm. and I got into Duke Kunshan University. Mm-hmm. It's like the branch with Duke mm-hmm. and the Kunshan. Mm-hmm. It's located in China. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, th- there is like University of Washington. Mm-hmm. It's in Seattle. Mm-hmm. That tech area mm-hmm. so that would be great if i had some money to study the, co- mm-hmm. the university university yeah. of washington mm-hmm. and there was like washington university in st louis mm-hmm. I, I, if i say that correct like yeah these are the universities i got in but none of them gave me the full right mm-hmm. so except for university of toronto and yeah Canada. university of toronto yeah. and the thing I hope from this university was financial aid mm-hmm. because U.S. In, if in U.S. U.S. you made a lot of podcasts with mm-hmm. students who studied in U.S. and they get financial aid. As long as you got accepted, they will give the money that you want. At least they try to their best to mm-hmm. give money something close. And but I'm guessing you also have to provide them with some kind of a financial financial sta- documents sta- statement. Yeah, showing how much your family makes makes yes, how much yeah. is your expenses, mm-hmm. something like this. Um, and to be eligible for that sort of scholarship. Financially, it's not. Sc- so there is like scholarship uh-huh. and financial aid. Uh-huh. The, you know, U.S. universities mostly give financial aid. Uh-huh. If you can prove that your family makes lower than $75,000 a year, a year, you will get financial aid. Yeah, which is the case with 90% of people, 90% li- of people living here. Yeah. Right. So, um, so if the college is... Mm-hmm if college meets with 100% demonstrated need. Mm-hmm. So there is like thing like demonstrated need thing. Mm-hmm. If for example, universities like um, Yale, uh, Stanford, Harvard, they meet with 100% me- uh, need. Mm-hmm. If you ask them like $100,000, they will give 100. If you if you ask more, they will give more. Mm-hmm. This is how they met like 100% need. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why like accepting the rate of this university is very low. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there are some terms that you might know that need aware and need blind colleges. Need aware colleges are basically look up your financial documents before they look through your mm-hmm. application. If 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 you have like if you ask like full financial aid, for example, if you ask like three hundred US dollars, three hundred thousand, three hundred or three hundred dollars, three hundred thousand, thousand, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I say something like this? Uh, yeah, yeah, something like that. Three hundred thousand dollars. Three hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and if you ask like fully financial aid, so it wouldn't be easy for you getting into this university. Mm-hmm. Even though you had like great application, mm-hmm. sometimes you will not be able to get into these universities just because you asked financial aid. Mm-hmm. That's why right now, like it's easy to right now Uzbeks learning how to get into top universities. So if they don't have good i uh, i mean application they just go without uh, they apply universities that are test uh, that have need aware without sat i mean without sat without ielts mm-hmm. i have a friend who got into a new new york university mm-hmm. and by your main campus wow he didn't send sat he didn't send ielts uh huh because of our school, he said like our school teaches in English. Uh-huh. That was only thing he said. Uh-huh. And he said he didn't ask for financial aid. Uh-huh. So that means he's paying full tuition himself. Everything. He, that means he pays for everything. He uh-huh. didn't ask just one, even one dollar. Uh-huh. He didn't ask wow. for it. The, he, the guy must be from a rich family. 
<laughs> it's not like this. He just forgot to apply financially. That's the thing. Oh, I see. Because he yeah. said like he was not strong applicant. Mm-hmm. He said like he can't get into NYU. Mm-hmm. He just at first he applied and didn't send financial document. Mm-hmm. But but university thought oh this guy doesn't need financial aid. Mm-hmm. Then he got accepted him <laughs> without SAE without yeah. that like great acti- activities. Uh-huh. They just accepted to New York University. University. Wow. So what's what's he gonna do now? Uh, he doesn't uh, go there. He's not going there. Yeah, right? He's not he's going, not going there. there. What what if you tell the university? Well, I my family just went bankrupt. I thought I, I could afford your tuition, but now I'm a bit of a pickle right now. Can you guys back me up? Can you guys? Uh, there is a, something like the appeal for the financial aid, but uh-huh. usually it doesn't work. For example, mm-hmm. I I ask like, but I think it's some, worth a shot. I think it's worth. I a think shot. it's worth a shot because like yeah. I asked some universities just to give like ten thousand more. Just uh-huh. give me ten thousand more financial aid. Uh-huh. I need that money. Uh-huh. That that will make a big difference for my life. Mm-hmm. They didn't give me. Mm-hmm. So like the like. University like Ji Kun Chan, it was like top 50 universities in the mm-hmm. world. Mm-hmm. I wanted to go there, to be honest, mm-hmm. even though it was in Ch- China. Mm-hmm. Because like I didn't have any options. Mm-hmm. I didn't have money to study there. Yeah. So th- then like I wanted to go there in my uh, Ji Kun Chan University and ask, they gave me full tuition. Mm-hmm. But I want, I, I asked like, just pay for my dormitory as well. Like that's not mm-hmm. big money for you guys. Mm-hmm. Just pay it for me. They, yeah. they said no. I asked, I I uh, sent a lot of appeals for financial aid to many universities, but they didn't give me. But when it comes to University of Toronto, it's not the same with U.S. universities. It's not like if you get in, you will get scholarship. It's mm-hmm. not something like this. Acceptance rate of the University of Toronto is quite high, if, I, if I'm being honest. Like it's 35 or 40%. Something like it's mm-hmm. really easy to get into University of Toronto because mm-hmm. I know guys with IL six six point five getting into the University of Toronto and winning a scholarship. No scholarship. Uh-huh. If you tell to University of Toronto that you have, uh, you can contribute to university uh, more than thirty five thousand mm-hmm. dollars a year, mm-hmm. they will accept you. That's the oh, key. That's something I talk with someone official of this university. No. Officially, they said it's not the open information, but mm-hmm. if you say to us that you can pay more than yeah. $35,000, you can easily get into. Wow. Because that's why acceptance rates are too high. Mm-hmm. It's not too high, but still, it's not the same as Harvard or I other mean, universities. Y- universities also have their bills to pay, right? They, they need money. Yeah. They need money. They can, it's yeah, not, they, yeah. They're not doing charity, they can, right? They can't yeah. give everyone scholarship or yeah. financial aid. And my scholarship was a merit-based scholarship. Uh-huh. They don't care about my financial need. Mm-hmm. Even, even if I tell oh, I'm dying, give me money. They don't care. So if I'm strong enough, they will give so the scholarship. So by merit-based, you mean like your academic excellence? Academic excellence, uh-huh. activity that I did in and out school, uh-huh. everything. Your IELTS and your SATs yeah, and Yeah, they, all they say things. like they have some sort of holistic approach mm-hmm. in, in every university mm-hmm. of admission. They say like holistic approach, so you don't know I, I, to be honest, don't know what parts of my application will mm-hmm. uh, stand out mm-hmm. and they accepted me. So I don't know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see. So that's what I, th- then like I, I got into, I applied, there are three campuses in the University of Toronto. Mm-hmm. Let's move into the University of Toronto. Mm-hmm. Three campuses. You have to pay application fee to each campus if you want to apply all of them. So I applied like to three campuses. I paid like $240. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I was applying to U.S. universities for free, like I applied this just one university mm-hmm. for like two hundred fifty dollars almost. Um, then main camp there are three campuses: Saint George, Mississauga, and Scarborough. The Saint George campus in the downtown, Mississauga campus in a suburban area, mm-hmm. and uh, Scarborough is in the middle. Mm-hmm. Both, so uh, you have to prioritize the campuses for yourself. I applied to St. George downtown campus with engineering. I applied to Mississauga with computer science and I applied with management to the Scarborough. Mm -hmm. Um, But the uh, computer science and management application quite easy. You just write essays and send it. But in engineering application, they took some tests, some mathematical tests, some interviews, a lot of things. So that's why I applied this two campuses in my, in my to my second and third choice um too early i applied too early in november i applied mm-hmm. then after like one month 
I applied to the uh, main campus, to St. George, with my engineering application. Because, like, these tasks took me a lot of energy and a lot of effort. Mm -hmm. Because, like, you have to take like, just live interview, for example. You just have to turn on your camera. They will just... The question pops up on your screen and mm -hmm. you have to answer without preparing it. Mm -hmm. So that was tough. So that's why it took me some time because I prepared it before just starting. So that's why I applied for the main campus quite late than other two campuses because I really wanted to study engineering. I didn't care about management or computer science. So that's why like I liked the engineering. So I, but it turned out like you will get the decisions from the campuses differently, not, not in the same time. Mm -hmm. In February... So it's like applying to three different universities. Three different universities. Yeah. Just under the one name. Mm -hmm. So something like this. I got into this Mississauga and Scarborough campus in February. At the end of February, I guess. I got into these universities and there is like entrance scholarship. So mm -hmm. They will give 100,000 US... Uh, 100 dollar scholarship for four years mm -hmm. it's not it's like if you consider like tuition is like sixty five thousand dollars and you get like twenty five thousand dollar each year scholarship it's not that much mm -hmm. oh, you have to pay the rest of yourself forty thousand yeah. dollars i can't afford it <laughs> no yeah. not an average guy can't afford it yet, yeah unless you have a full-time yeah. job working. i didn't i think i didn't mm -hmm. post it in anywhere maybe i, mm -hmm. I posted it on my instagram or telegram channel mm -hmm. but I, I did. I was not happy with this. I didn't consider this as an achievement. Mm -hmm. there, I was considering. I was already considering other options. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got into University of Toronto. Then what? Mm -hmm. I, I'm not because the decision of this Leicester B. Pearson scholarship uh, were not out mm -hmm. at that time. It was only February. I was doing my application. I was hoping to get some full ride to some American universities. Mm -hmm. Because like me winning uh, uh, like Leicester B. Pearson scholarship was very hard. I didn't have SAT, that mm -hmm. things. But it, it seemed to me that I would easily get into uh, the U U.S. universities with uh, good financial aid. Mm -hmm. Because like there were some universities with like 30, 35 percent acceptance rate. So I thought like I could easily get one of them. Mm -hmm. It turned out, but I couldn't. It actually might be... Like that, what happened is we try to look at the silver lining here. The it might actually be a better idea to study in Canada right now, given the political situation in the U.S. and with the upcoming election, the country does not seem to be in a stable position right now. It's not politically stable, so it see it might actually be to your advantage that you got into university in Canada, not going to the U.S. Because everyone thinks like U.S. is the the place to be in. It's the place to go. But there are so many uh, other great countries around the world. Yeah, U.S. Education. is not stable. Like in any yeah. time, it was not really stable. Mm -hmm. And and I kind of wanted this life, mm -hmm. the life to be not in the same pace. Mm -hmm. But it turned out like mm -hmm. God God gave me that mm -hmm. just peace. Like mm -hmm. they say, like Canada is really cool. Like people are really mm -hmm. friendly and. Mm -hmm. you, Polit poli there are not many political problems there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you have money to leave, it's a mm -hmm. good place to leave. They said, it like, is. stay in Canada. Yeah. They said something like this. That's why, like, mm -hmm. after, like, okay, uh, to, to the point that I got this scholarship, like, I was just, I was so depressed that I was having some problems with my health. Mm -hmm. So um, I, had, I had a surgery in March. Um, then I, oh, I'm sorry. The, the, what yeah. kind of surgery was it? Yeah, it was just, uh, okay, let's don't disclose. Oh, okay, sure. No problem. I don't want to disclose just personal uh -huh. things. I, uh -huh. I had surgery then, mm -hmm. the, and before the surgery, it turned out I have problem with my heart too, mm -hmm. that I have that some sort of breakouts, mm -hmm. if you know it or not, like mm -hmm. when your heart is burning, like it, mm -hmm. it sometimes stops for some oh. second and then they, they yeah, so you got some kind of a heart problem yeah then, then i have some problems with breathing if oh. you are fo if you're looking at me like mm -hmm. i sometimes speak really fast mm -hmm. then i stop and breathe then i mm -hmm. continue the speaking mm -hmm. that's why i have some problems with speaking too mm -hmm. so i have some problems with my uh, heart too uh, then like after the surgery i i, I was really depressed that i said mm -hmm. i don't care about this college application thing mm -hmm. uh, yeah my, my surgery went well but still, I had some heart problems. 
um, after that, um, then then in April, I was just doing that SAT thing. I was trying to make my school SAT test center. Then I got an email. I didn't open it. Then say, then then open it like after 30 minutes or something like this. I just open it and and read like your status of Pearson application. It was an email. I saw like no, I wouldn't get email if I win this scholarship. I saw like it would be on a website some mm-hmm. sort of. Um, then. Then I read all the email. It was too long. It was late. I really tired it back then. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't understand anything. I, I'm saying like, do I really understand English? Like I didn't understand anything mm-hmm. in this file. Also, mm-hmm. There were like three files attached. Mm-hmm. And I only understand the part like, please read the file attached mm-hmm. and respond f- until July, eight, uh, until April 18th. Mm-hmm. I only understand this part. I mm-hmm. open it and, and I read like, I'm I am delighted to congratulate you winning Lester B. Pearson. I'm like I was happy as fuck, bro. Like, <laughs> it was the moment like uh-huh. changed my life. Uh-huh. If I didn't get the scholarship, I'm being honest, we wouldn't be sitting on this table uh-huh. doing podcasts. Yeah. No one would knew me, like uh-huh. no one no one would even uh knew that there is a guy called mm-hmm. Diorbek who's from Nawaii mm-hmm. or even Samarkand, like uh-huh. he doesn't even know that yeah. himself. Mm-hmm. Um, very complex ident- identity, I would say. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, I got I got this scholarship. I was happy. I was happy. <laughs> yeah, I was. Sh- I still remember this mm-hmm. th- this evening. Yeah, I was. I can screaming. see you getting emotional right now, remembering that moment. Yeah, so. I, w- I was screaming. Yeah, uh-huh. it was like life changing. Yeah, imagine is. like getting rejected like twenty universities. Mm-hmm. And what, uh, until that point, what was, what was your parents' reaction when they found out you got into university and were get, you were getting full ride scholarship? Um, the thing that most people t- just immediately tell their parents. Uh-huh. But what I did just I, I told my friend, I told Najib then uh-huh. I was screaming, mm-hmm. I was just screaming mm-hmm. and telling that I, I got this scholarship. Right? I said I thought I am the only guy uh-huh. that got this scholarship uh-huh. because like it wasn't publicly announced back mm-hmm. then. I said, I'm the first guy who got this scholarship. Mm-hmm. I was screaming. Mm-hmm. I was screaming to everyone. Like Then I called my dad, dad, I got this scholarship. I'm mm-hmm. the first Uzbek who mm-hmm. got this scholarship. Mm-hmm. Blah, 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 blah. Like, he said, like, why are you screaming like a female? Mm-hmm. Bro, don't sc-. My dad said, like, just calm down. Mm-hmm. Just be a man. Just mm-hmm. It's not something something that you can be proud of. He mm-hmm. said, oh, really? Again? Like I said, like I can't proud of that too. Mm-hmm. Then we had some conversation and he, he wanted me to call him down because mm-hmm. I wasn't even sp- uh, uh, speaking good. I was just shaking. Mm-hmm. I was sh- I was happy. I was shaking. Mm-hmm. And I said, just call him down. Just drink mm-hmm. some water. Just wash your face. Just calm down. He said he saw like I would have some problems with my heart if I had oh, if I had like that happy overreacting. Just call him down, mm-hmm. but don't be don't be girl or something mm-hmm. like this. He said, <laughs> "Not like a girl, right? <laughs> don't or react what, like this." Just, what a what a harsh dad, right? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Then then like okay, I said like, that, that you don't understand it. Uh-huh. Okay, bye bye. I said just turn it off. Like I, ooh, I was I I rented an apartment uh-huh. so with my friends. I didn't leave with my parents, as I said. Mm-hmm. Like I was screaming, going one room to another, and my friends were like, "Ah, oh, bro, mm-hmm. we are going to sleep. Just mm-hmm. go to your room and mm-hmm. sleep." Mm-hmm. And I'm like, "How come I sleep?" I, I called my friends, "Come to my home." Like uh-huh. I got scholarship. But like yeah. I, we will celebrate this. Like I was doing something like this, yeah, all night. Wow. Wow, what a wild experience. What a wild experience. I mean, I don't know how I would have reacted to that in that situation. I mean, winning almost four hundred thousand dollars scholarship is no joke, guys. Come on. That's that's like hitting the jackpot, right? That's no. that's roughly forty trillion Uzbek sums. Um, I don't know. At least that like they're covering money. everything yeah. for me. Like I'm studying uh-huh. like top 20 university in the world for free. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. most important part. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there is like, there is a pattern in all of the guys who got, like got into top universities and mm-hmm. got scholarship. If you know, there is a girl whose name is Farangiz Muradi. Mm-hmm. Not really. I don't, I don't know. Uh, he studies in Stanford. Wow. He's a sophomore right uh-huh. now. He got into last year. All right. So Ms. Farangiz, if you're watching this podcast, we want to talk to you. Please come down to Bukhara to go yeah. on the podcast. I can recommend a lot of people who said he's in top universities for your podcast. That'd bro. be wonderful. That'd be <laughs> yeah. great. Please. Yeah. She, she also got rejected most of the universities she mm-hmm. applied. Mm-hmm. And 
Sanford was the only university that she left with, mm-hmm. and she got into this university. Stanford with full right. Full right scholarship. Yeah, full wow. right. How, and, how, how old? How old was she at the time? Uh, she, it, it was last year. It last was year. last year, and she was like nineteen or nineteen year old girl. And she got took into three gap years or something like this. Yeah, uh, she she had mm-hmm. some gap years. Um, and also Rustam Nuru, mm-hmm. he, he, I knew, I remember his application too. Mm-hmm. He he applied only four universities. He got rejected from two of them mm-hmm. and got waitlisted from Colby mm-hmm. or something like this. Mm-hmm. And only university he left was, was Yale. Mm-hmm. And he was thinking about gap year. I, 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 I remember that every component of his word, I mean, every Mm-hmm. Everything we talked about his application, he said like I was preparing for the gap year. He said like I was looking for some internships abroad. I was just trying to improve my portfolio. He said like in my experience, I was doing the same thing. I was thinking about what colleges I will apply next year. Um, I did. I was not really sure to, where to go. Actually, I said like okay, I may. Go to U.S. if I get U.S. visa with mm-hmm. average college, but you know it's really hard to get U.S. visa mm-hmm. with just average yeah. college, and if you don't have the full scholarship, and I'm like, oh, or at least I can stay in Uzbekistan and take a gap year. And University of Toronto was my only option. I never saw I, I could get this scholarship. I yes, I had some universities on my on my list that. Highly, there is like highly chance of me getting scholarship, but University of Toronto was not on this list because I didn't know about the scholarship at all. So it was hard to know Uzbeks. So it was tough. Mm-hmm. And I, I got this scholarship and it was my last chance. Same with Rusam Noor. He got into Yale and it was his last chance. Mm-hmm. I don't know. There is always pattern in something like this. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you just got to have little faith that things will work out. Things will work out and just keep trying. Keep trying, and eventually, at the end, things will. Yeah, work yeah. Out. Keep trying. Mm-hmm. That's that's a key. Like a lot mm-hmm. of guys who apply to like some universities in early cycle, mm-hmm. they got rejections, and they say, "Okay, I don't apply to top universities. I mm-hmm. don't need this thing," and they ended up with nothing. Mm-hmm. So, I, I would end up with nothing too. I just risk it. I got this scholarship. Mm-hmm. Even if I didn't get the scholarship, I at least have the experience. Next year, I would come back as a better applicant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, so the that's only only thing for the college applicants is just not to stop at mm-hmm. any point when mm-hmm. you are applying to universities. Until you get to the point, just don't, you don't have to stop it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, right. That's, so that's how you win this game of college application, right? That's, yeah. That's one of the best strategies you would recommend to young people yeah. out there i said just like I, I, I just use it to make some jokes to my friends like mm-hmm. i hate winter to be mm-hmm. honest like i, I hate cold mm-hmm. so i knew that i'm not that strong to get the scholarship i said like i found this scholarship and they pay they give you full ride even if they give full ride i don't go to canada it mm-hmm. canada is cold i mm-hmm. used to make this joke and my friends telling me this mm-hmm. i used to don't want to go to this mm-hmm. university. I'm like, come on. I mm-hmm. was joking. Yeah. I felt like I'm not strong yeah. enough that I was just um, trying to find some excuses. Yeah. Like if they ask, did you get the scholarship? I said, no, I wouldn't go there if I if I won the scholarship. I was planning to say something like this, mm-hmm. but I ended up winning the scholarship. Like yeah. that was life changing. Yeah. Right, right. You're just going to bring with you some warm clothes and you'll be all right. But yeah. don't worry, you're going to be fine. <laughs> yeah, some challenge. Yeah. We have to face, yes. Uh, we talked quite a bit about university, college application, and your past, right? And we're, we, I think we hit the two hour mark. Oh, really? Okay. It's a little over two hours. So usually we wrap things up on a more philosophical note. And at the final part of the podcast, I'd like to ask you some questions about philosophy. So to finish things off, right? Okay. So, a question I got for you is, yeah. What's your personal philosophy? So what do you think you're doing on this planet? What do you think? So what's something that drives you? What's something that gets you up in the morning? So um, what are you trying to do with your life? I think there is always a point of just mm-hmm. keep coming to this life mm-hmm. and just not talking about this religion and mm-hmm. other stuff. Mm-hmm. I just have the only one purpose. I just want to give the people something good. Mm-hmm. I just born here and 
only thing I want to do is just give something back to mm-hmm. the community that that I that shaped my my uh, identity and give something good. Mm-hmm. So this is my whole goal in my life. Like, mm-hmm. Even though, like, yeah, this, uh, there is like, uh, yeah, I wanted to make some money at some point. I, I, I want maybe I want to be millionaire at some point. But the whole point of making that, that so much fortune is giving back to community. Mm-hmm. That's the whole thing. I would mm-hmm. be happy if I did something bad, but it might bring some good to the community. I'm I'm, I'm okay with it, mm-hmm. even if I get like if i die after doing this or if i get if i go to the jail after saying something or after doing something i'm okay with it as long as it's good for the community as long as for it's good for the the majority i'm i'm okay with it mm-hmm. so yeah yeah it's a, it's actually a breath of fresh air seeing someone as young as you community minded because a lot of teenagers young people out there they're mostly driven by things like money, fame, influence, but it's so refreshing to see someone your age saying that you want to give back to your community. And that's something I noticed actually in a lot of the students I talked to got into those universities. They, they are community minded. Their, their goal is not just to make lots of money, ton of cash, right? But actually to give back to the community where they were brought up to and and return the favor to all the people who helped them get there in the yeah. first place. So, the, yeah. yeah, money is like one of the tools. Like mm-hmm. a lot of people say that. Some people say that if after I make this much or mm-hmm. I have like this much passive income, just mm-hmm. I stop just working and try to enjoy the life. They mm-hmm. say something like this, but no. Um, I, I also heard like something like if you have like forty four million dollars mm-hmm. and you put it into bank and it will give you like one million dividend every year so mm-hmm. you don't have to work uh, until the end of your life. Mm-hmm. I heard something like this, but there is like just one point: uh, people who's who made like forty four million dollar and bringing good to the community doesn't stop at this point. Mm-hmm. So just as it's like the criminal thing, you just you you get involved to criminal thing. Mm-hmm. Yes, you make money. And even if you want to get out mm-hmm. of this thing, you cannot. They mm-hmm. they don't allow you to get get out of this mm-hmm. business. But unlike uh, criminal stuff, you're doing something good here. Yeah, something good. That yeah. that's I want to be something like this. Yeah. I don't want to get out of this thing. Uh-huh. Even though if I'm tired, even mm-hmm. though I don't have time to my family that much. Mm-hmm. If if as long as I'm uh, enjoying the process, as long as I'm having some good time, mm-hmm. doing good thing mm-hmm. to the world, mm-hmm. that's it. That's all I want in life. Yeah. Like the money and everything else is like secondary thing in my life. Mm-hmm. Of course, I need. I want to be millionaire. Yes, I want to make a lot of money. Yes, I want to have good life for mm-hmm. my family. Mm-hmm. But then what? There is a whole community community that needs to be improved. Mm-hmm. So that's why I don't need millions. Okay, I need billions to improve the community that helped me to shape my mm-hmm. mindset. Wow, wow. Yeah, that's very admirable. I- Honestly, it really is. So what's one piece of advice you'd give to a lot of young people out there, 15, 16 year olds who are just getting started? What would you say to them? Um, or what would you say to your 16 year old self if you could talk to him? Just consistency is key to everything. Mm-hmm. You don't have to stop until you, until you get to the point where you want to be. Mm-hmm. So if you start something, you, you either have to start Mm-hmm. After you start, you either have to finish it mm-hmm. or just don't do it at all. Otabik mm-hmm. I, I, if you know this guy, mm-hmm. he told something like this: You don't, you have to remove uh, the word chala in your mm-hmm. uh, vocabulary. Either you have to do it until the end, or you don't have to do it at all. Mm-hmm. So that's the whole point. If you start something, you should just, um, just. Do it until the end, until you succeed, until you achieve the thing that you wanted in the first place, and and you always have, all you always has have to try to be the best. That's that's my. This is kind of my philosophy. This is like something that Zlatan Ibrahimovic said. Why can't be? There was he said something like this. Why be normal when you can be best? Uh-huh. This is like good thing. Yeah. I, w- I would love to everyone to re- remember this this quote. Mm-hmm. Why you should be normal when you can be the best. 
Yeah, no one could have said it better than Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Yeah. Right? I like that guy too. Yeah, he's a little cocky though. He's, yeah. Yeah, right. All right. So say this podcast is right now being watched. It's being watched, watched, watched by your future self. You're, you're 19 right now, right? 18. 18. Say, Just turned 18. Say, yeah. Yeah. say your 28-year-old self is right now watching this podcast, looking back. What's something you would say to her? I mean, there is a big question that mm -hmm. this guy, like 28 years old, your, your mm -hmm. back would be alive or not. Mm -hmm. This is a big question. But, but other than that, like, I would... Um, I, I got lost with my mind. Okay, mm -hmm. just can you start again? So yeah, yeah, for sure. So, so if your 28-year-old self, your future self is right now watching you, what would you say to him? I mean, I hope that guy <laughs> like got to the point where he wanted at the beginning. Yeah. I hope he, uh -huh. he's, he's making a lot of fortune, uh -huh. he's making a lot of money, uh -huh. and he's giving a, a lot of good and to, to everyone. Mm -hmm. He's not getting rich by himself, mm -hmm. but he's also making the reach the whole community around mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. He's helping to people. Mm -hmm. I wish he will help. I wish he will not change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that that's the thing I want to tell him. Yeah, and, is, you, can and you have to stay like yeah. more years. Like there are more years to stay like mm -hmm. this, bro. Like if you're watching, like after ten years, you have to be mm -hmm. like this. Even mm -hmm. even when you are 38 mm -hmm. 48 i don't mm -hmm. know how many years you will have mm -hmm. but you have to stay the same mm -hmm. wow that's very powerful all right mr leo Beck, it was so much fun talking to you today finding out about your personal experience of getting into university your prep process and your stories about working with minors working with people from different walks of life that was that was a fun ride, ride I had with you here today and I hope our audience enjoyed the podcast too so do you have any final comments you want to make before we wrap it up um, thanks for invitation Mr. Uh -huh. Muhammad Ali like yeah. I'm a big fan of yours as I said in the beginning like oh, thank you this thanks. is a great pleasure to sit on the same table with you uh -huh. and discussing especially my life uh -huh. like, like this being interesting to you like this is just great achievement for me uh -huh. I, to be honest like I, I think I never thought like I would come to Bukhara mm -hmm. to be to have podcast with you like, uh -huh. thank you like I'm really yeah, grateful sure. for that it's just the beginning of many more achievements to come okay your story is just getting started your story is just getting started yeah there's thanks. still a lot of work to be done buddy thank you thank you I will I will of course if you have time in some time in August I would invite you to my school and uh -huh. we also have some YouTube channel uh -huh. I would love to make even the short interview with you yeah. I would love to do it thank you there yeah sure. thank you thanks for the invitation sure yeah I'll, I'll do my best all right guys hope you enjoyed today's episode if you liked our content please don't forget to subscribe like it and leave your comments in the comment section below I'll see you in the next one peace